Happening weekdays on WBRI 12 and Fox Providence. This is attorney Ronald J. Rizmini. For more than 50 years, my team has represented personal injury victims in Rhode Island and Massachusetts. If you've been injured in a car accident at work or sustained any damages as a result of the wrongful conduct of another, call the law offices of Ronald J. Rizmini. We wrote the book on personal injury law and continue to rewrite it. There is no cost to you unless we win. Get more with the power of four. Call 401 444 4444. The mission of University Gastroenterology is to provide comprehensive gastrointestinal care in a patient friendly setting. By using the newest medical technology and implementing the highest clinical standards, the physicians of UGI are dedicated to providing treatment for a wide array of gastrointestinal and liver diseases. For more than 30 years, University Gastroenterology has been serving the communities of Southern New England. We appreciate the trust and confidence of our patients and referring physicians. For more info, visit University G. Disaster strikes without warning. Winter storm and wind damage, flooding, fire can all happen in an instant. But cleanup can take time. You need the experts at Clean Care of New England. They minimize your loss, coordinate insurance coverage, and get your property back to pre-disaster condition. Clean Care is prompt and reliable, skilled and certified. Trust Clean Care of New England for your restoration needs and go from disaster zone to happy home. Call Clean Care of New England, 941 or cleancare.net. When it's time to sell your home, you hope your agent knows the market, timing, pricing, interest rates, neighborhoods, staging open houses, understanding contracts, completing paperwork. Oh, and can actually help guide you on your big move. Don't hope, no. When you hire a Weikert agent, you can be sure you've got a partner who will guide you every step of the way, from listing to closing and everything in between. Weikert, dream, move, home. Each Weikert franchised office is independently owned and operated. At Rhode Island Credit Union, we value people over profits. Unlike for-profit financial institutions accountable to stockholders, we answer only to our members. That's a big and important difference. Our not-for-profit service model benefits members with better rates and fewer fees. We are rooted in our state and committed to our communities, and we've been doing so proudly since 1946. We're big enough to serve your needs and small enough to know you. We listen to you and care. You have a voice with us. When considering your choice for a financial institution, take a close look at the differences and make the best decision for you. If you're looking for a bank where you're not just a number and profits aren't the main objective, then Rhode Island Credit Union may be perfect for you. We're dedicated to helping you fulfill all of your dreams, both big and small. Visit ricreditunion.org or any of our branch locations to learn more. We're more than just banking. What happens if your security provider can't service your alarm system any longer? Mount Pleasant Alarms, family owned and operated for almost 50 years, can monitor and service most existing alarm systems. Let Mount Pleasant Alarms protect what matters most to you. Mount Pleasant Alarms, a trusted name in security. Let's go Friars! On the Providence Friars Sports Network, from Learfield... This is Providence Friars Basketball, brought to you by Bank R.I. When businesses think big, they think first of Bank R.I. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Coast to Coast Promotional Products, official promotional products company of PC Athletics. And by Haxton's Liquors, always the best prices since 1933. Now to courtside, this is Friars Pregame. And welcome inside the Amica Mutual Pavilion in downtown Providence, Rhode Island for Providence College Friar Basketball. 40 more. That's what these guys are heading for tonight. It's not where you thought they might be, but they're still playing ball. It's the first round of the National Invitation Tournament and the renewal of an old Big East rivalry. It's Providence against Boston College. And hi again, everyone. I'm John Rook along with Joe Hassett. And yeah, this is not where you want to be. This is not what you work for at the beginning of the year. But we all know what transpired over the course of, you know, the last uh, 48 hours or so, Joe. And without sort of revisiting it, the Friars certainly feel like they had a case. So did Seton Hall. So did St. John's. So did several other teams around the country that didn't get into the primary tournament, the NCAA tournament. And so what you have here is a chance to make chicken salad out of chicken feathers and hopefully get a couple of wins and get some experience for some of the guys that haven't had a ton of it this year. 
Yeah, that all sounds good, John. But, <laughs> right? But you know. As, you know, there's like 10 different algorithms they can use. So whatever one suits their pleasure to put a team in, that's the one they use. You know, how does Michigan State get in at 19 and 14? I mean, right. they, didn't, they didn't beat anybody. Big Ten's overrated every year. But we can go through all those numbers all day long. But, you know, the guys are getting to play another game. And we get to see a game where Devin Carter isn't playing. We'll see what the Friars can do without him, his durability all year. Just imagine what you... Friars didn't play a game without him this year. I mean, even if he was banged up, he played. He just, he was the guy on the floor that made everything happen. And we'll find out tonight. Other guys will get an opportunity to play. And you might find something that you didn't know you had in a game like this. Boston College team is a team that has been playing decent basketball. They've won four of their last five ball games. They almost beat Virginia to get to the semifinals of the uh, ACC tournament. The NC State team that won it. Beat Boston College. Boston, at one time, Boston College was 15 and 14 in league play and 6 and 12 in conference. Play, I mean, overall, 6 and 12 in conference play. Right. And here they are playing a postseason because they had a good strong run at the end of the year. They got four guys averaging double figures. It's going to be an interesting matchup tonight too, John, because Odoro, Josh Odoro has been playing the opposing centers, who are basically shot blockers and really don't look to score. But the big kid for Boston College, Quentin Post, is seven feet, but he shoots threes at 44 percent. So you're going to have to get out on him like you get out on Josh. So it'll be an interesting matchup for him. But it's a team, you know, we haven't seen any. I mean, I haven't seen them play at all, Boston College. But you know, they're playing good basketball right now, and everybody's on the roster playing for them tonight. So it should be an interesting game to see what the Friars can do. Eagles come in having won four of their last five. And, of course, you touched on the fact that Devin Carter is not going to play tonight. He's just banged up, really, with ankle, calf and shoulder injuries from the Big East Tournament. Rich Barron also not going to play tonight because he suffered a concussive injury uh, in that last game against Marquette. There is the hope that those two might be able to play at some point if the Friars win, but right now they have to worry themselves about this Boston College team because you win, you play on, you lose, you're done for the year. Right, you're done, and you know if the Friars are able to win this one, they can either play UNLV here, or if Princeton wins, the Friars have to go play at Princeton in the next ball game, but you know, this is a team. Friars, you know, they got to come out. Guys are going to get some minutes in this one. You're probably going to. Galway Dual is going to play a lot more in this ball game without Devin Carter. Devin plays mostly a whole game. We'll probably see Castro play a little bit more minutes. And Tim English can use different guys in this game that he hasn't used before. I imagine we'd see Donovan Santoro tonight. We'll probably see Donovan Santoro. He played him a little bit. But, I mean, he's only got seven guys he's basically going to use. So it'll be interesting to see. Who steps up in this ball game? This Boston College team, no, they're playing good basketball, so Friars better play well to win this ball game. So you have, um, you know, Oduro, who will start, uh, Pierre, Floyd, Duall, um, and Gaines, and then off of the bench, it's really just Castro and Santoro. Yeah. So if you're a player in this ball game, you know you're going to get some minutes, and you know you want to get out there and get in the ball game and show what you can do. This feel like you mentioned already, John. This feels like a November game, like the beginning of the season type game, not the end of the end right. of the season type game. It does kind of just a little bit, but it is what it is. And the Friars will uh, go up against a Boston College Eagle team that they have not faced since 2018. Last time Providence and BC played was at the County Forum back on December the 4th, 2018. I remember Friar then freshman AJ Reeves had a big night that night as Providence won in overtime. Yeah, AJ was knocking down every shot. That was back in the days when the Friars played Boston College every year. They used to alternate home home and away, like in the old days back in the 70s and 80s. But, you know, it's they don't play anymore, so it's an interesting game. Uh, you probably have this stat. I mean, it's probably a game that the Friars, Boston College, have played a lot over history. I mean, I don't know, you know, Friars have played Villanova and St. John's in numerous times, but Boston College has to be right up there, too. Well, this is the 114th meeting between the two schools. This is actually tied for the most played opponent in Boston College basketball history, the Friars are. How about that? I mean, that's a stat that, you know, made right up the street, you're going to play them all the time, but now you don't play with the different conferences well, because of football. They play football, so they're out of the Big East now for good, and they're in the ACC to play football. Yep, so the uh, Friars and the BC Eagles getting ready to renew acquaintances here inside the Amica Mutual Pavilion tonight. Again, BC 19-15 and 15 overall. They finished 8-12 and 12 
in the ACC. That was 11th best during the regular season, but a slight improvement over where they were a year ago. They were 16 and 17 a year ago under Earl Grant, who is in his third year as head coach at Boston College. Friars come in at 21 and 13 overall, finished the regular season at 10 and 10, and reached the semifinal round of the Big East tournament this last week. So they do have a little something going for them, but what that is, we're getting ready to find out because they will be short-handed tonight, and that will be the, the main key, really, to what we've got here tonight and whether or not the Friars will play on tonight. You, you know you're short-handed. Somebody's got to come up big. Yeah, somebody's going to get some minutes, and you need to go out there and, and get it done. You know, you look at this game tonight, you know, Bryce Hopkins and, and Pitch Barron's not playing. Bryce hasn't played. Devin Carter, so you two best players in Devin Carter and Bryce Hopkins on in the lineup in this ballgame, so the Friars have to find other guys and let's see if they can get it started off for next year right now in this ballgame. All right, so we'll uh, take the time out here. We'll come back and visit with the head coach of the Friars, Kim English. And then we'll come back and take a look at the starting lineups, and we're going to tip it off. It's the first round of the NIT. A lot of history in this tournament, actually, between both of these schools. Of course, the Friars, and anybody who knows anything about Providence College basketball knows that Providence won the NIT back in 1961 and 63, even though it was 60-plus years ago. Boston College has a winning all-time record in the NIT as well. It's their 13th appearance all-time, and they're 5-3 and three in true away games. So BC has something to shoot for as well. Kim English is coming up next. From Learfield, this is Providence Friar Basketball. Hey, Friar fans, this is Coach Kim English from Providence College Men's Basketball. I want to extend a massive thank you to Finetco, a family of lumber yards and the incredible Finnegan family for being phenomenal partners. Finetco embodies an elite mindset in every project they undertake. It's about seizing the moment, just like on the court. With three convenient locations across Rhode Island, Connecticut, and Massachusetts, if you have any home improvement or building needs, call Finetco at 1-800-390-0919 or visit them at finetco.net and let's unite to build a winning future. Go Friars! At Balanced Wealth Management, we believe in the power of legacy and family values. Founded by Robert O'Claire, a professor at Providence College for over 35 years, our team at Balanced Wealth understands the importance of understanding and collaboration when it comes to your financial future. With our dedication and expertise, we're here to empower you to make informed decisions, ensuring a balanced and secure financial future. Call us today, 401-398-2000, for a free written financial plan. Balanced Wealth Management, guiding your path to financial success. Finding the perfect engagement ring can be overwhelming, but no one makes it easier than Hanoush Jewelers. And because Hanoush is a direct diamond importer and a jewelry manufacturer, you'll save 30 to 60% off everyday pricing. Let the experts at Hanoush Jewelers make your experience one you'll remember forever. Hanoush Jewelers at 325 Quaker Lane in West Warwick and at 435 State Road in the Hanoush Plaza in Dartmouth. Hanoush Jewelers, a family jeweler for your family. Welcome back inside the AMP. Time to visit with the head coach of the Friars, Kim English. Providence and Boston College in the first round of the National Invitation Tournament. And I know when you say that, it's just kind of like, wow, really? At least that's the first impression that I have. But So I guess the question I really have for you tonight, Coach, is regardless of what's happened up to this point in time, how do you, and I'll borrow your own phrase, how do you create the right mindset for a game like tonight with your guys? Well, when you step on the court, it's a privilege. When you step on the court in college basketball, when you step on the court with the Providence Friars jersey on, it's a privilege. Um, you know, this is Josh Adoro's first time playing in a postseason. This is Ticket's first time playing postseason since he was at Tennessee played a first round game against Oregon State 12-5 mm -hmm. um, it's an opportunity for Jaden Pierre and Garway Duall and Rafael Castro and Corey Floyd to continue to grow it's an opportunity for me to get more reps coaching um, and I think that's important I think it's important for our guys to know what it feels like to be playing basketball this time of the year because um, hopefully this is our last time playing in the NIT. Right. Okay. Let's also uh, then refer to uh, some of the uh, roster moves that you decided to make before tonight. I believe Rich Barron uh, hurt himself in the last game, uh, and then you decided to hold out Devin. Uh, might there be any change in that status if you guys win tonight and move on? Yeah, no, we're um, we're just watching Devin, you know, day to day. His, you know, he's pretty banged up after a long season, mm -hmm. um, and particularly – um, you know, Wired went 40, I think, pretty much 40 against Georgetown, 40 against Creighton. Yeah. 
ton of minutes against uh, Marchetti, even though he had foul trouble. Um, um, Richard, um, you know, he, he got banged up pretty good in the last game. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we got who we got. And uh, we got seven able bodies. And the way I see it, that's that's too, too many. You, know, <laughs> you only need five. Okay. Well, then let's talk about Boston College as well, because here's a team that certainly played well at the end of the year. I think they won four of the last five. Probably should have beaten Virginia in the ACC tournament as well. And as we know, Virginia snuck into the NCAA tournament. Uh, one of the premier post players, perhaps, in the entire ACC, a young man. Boston College Sports Network from Learfield. Fun. We're playing for keeps at the Massachusetts State Lottery. It means so much more than just money for you, because we've been giving bets in 72. Your wallet explodes while we're plowing the roads, and we're building schools while you're buying a pool. So try your lucky numbers you can see for yourself. Everyone's a winner in the Commonwealth. Everyone's a winner in the Commonwealth. Be sure to visit Apex Entertainment in Marlboro, located right off Route 495. Apex is the largest family entertainment center in New England. It has over 100,000 square feet of pure fun. You can enjoy over 30 lanes of bowling, including Candle Pen, a multi-level go-kart track, Apex Kids, sports simulators, bumper cars, laser tag, mini golf, ropes course, and arcade. Also, don't forget about their chef-inspired menu in the Pit Stop Tavern with over 65 gluten-free items. Apex Entertainment, where perfect weather is always guaranteed. Go Eagles! Courtside Show continues with today's Coach's Corner, brought to you by Designer Advantage, where great interior design becomes a great business. Back on the Eagles Courtside Show ahead of Boston College in Providence in the first round of the NIT. Joined now by Boston College assistant coach Anthony Goins, who had the scout for the Providence College Friars tonight. Coach, quick turnaround from the selection show on Sunday to here on Tuesday. What challenges does Providence present in this old Big East rivalry? Uh, well, they're a really tough team and well-coached team. Kim English has done an unbelievable job in his first year here. Uh, just establishing an identity. They play super hard. Uh, they're efficient offensively. They shoot a lot of threes. Um, they're really three in rim, threes and layups uh, and dunks at the rim. And, and uh, they create a lot of fouls. So just being able to get our guys' minds in a place where, hey, we got to go out and uh, give a big-time effort because this is an ultra-talented team and a well-coached team, and they're going to play hard. So we had to uh, get our guys' mind uh, moving on from the ACC tournament. Uh, even though it didn't end off exactly how we wanted to, we would be able to take some of the things that we did well there and try to apply them here because you only have a little turnaround time. Now, Coach, a lot of coaches have been outspoken about the NIT process after the NCAA tournament. A lot of coaches declining to commit to play in the NIT, declining the invitation. But on the positive end of the spectrum, what can you use this NIT experience to build and help build this Boston College program going forward? Well, you know what, listen, man, uh, we, we took over a program that had four wins when we got here. So, you know, every every little thing is, uh, is, is a, a step in the right direction for us. And uh, I always believe everything has an expiration date, like milk, right? Like some of these guys, their, their basketball career has an expiration date. And if we get a chance to prolong that expiration date just a little bit, you know, then we got to take advantage of it. And being able to play in the NIT because these guys work their butts off every single day, starting from the summertime, foreign tour, um, all the way to non-conference, ACC tournament, being able to play three games in three days and being prepared for that. And, and you know, within a couple of seconds of, a, of, of it being four games in four days, you know, we get a chance to play in the NIT and a, and a, and a history tournament like this, you know, we got to we got to take advantage of it because if we can prolong these guys, you know, career and opportunity to put on this Boston College jersey and to represent this great university, we're, we're going to choose it every single time. Our thanks to Boston College assistant coach Anthony Goins for his time here on the Eagles courtside show. We're getting close to tip off here in Providence between the Eagles and Friars. You're listening to Boston College basketball from Learfield. Source Promo is the best choice for your company's branded promotional products and wearable needs. Source Promo works with you like an agency would and provides better service and pricing than the mega promo places you see on TV. When your brand or business needs help finding just the right thing for your promotional activation, sponsorship, staff engagement, or customer appreciation event, go to SourcePromo.com to get the conversation started. Source Promo is proud to be a partner of Boston College Athletics. Go Eagles! 
Which schools will take home the prestigious Learfield Directors Cup for the 2023-24 college athletic season? You can follow the standings of your favorite school or alma mater at L Directors Cup on Twitter and online at thedirectorscup.com. That's thedirectorscup.com and L Directors Cup on Twitter. Trophies will be awarded in June 2024 to the winning institutions in all competitive divisions. Learfield Directors Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics. Today's game is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Looking for a career path with flexibility and great pay and benefits? Go to Progressive.com slash careers and apply online today. This is the Boston College Sports Network from Learfield. And the game goes into overtime. But... The game goes into overtime. The choice to enjoy is easy. Bud Light, easy to drink, easy to enjoy. Order Bud Light online today. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Bud Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. This is Tom's experience. I was completely committed to buying a house. I just wasn't sure I could pull off a huge down payment. At Cambridge Savings Bank, we know that your home buying experience will be unique. That's why our dedicated mortgage loan experts share your commitment, taking the time to truly understand your individual needs and working with you to find solutions that set you up for success. See how Cambridge Savings Bank can help you get home at cambridgesavings.com. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender, NMLS number 543370. Welcome back to the Eagles courtside show ahead of this first round NIT matchup between Boston College and Providence from the Amica Mutual Pavilion here in beautiful Providence, Rhode Island. It's time now for the Mass General Brigham Injury Report. It's going to be headlined by Chaz Kelly for Boston College, who's missing his third straight week following appendicitis. For the Providence College Friars, they are missing two star players headlined by Big East Player of the Year, Devin Carter, who has calf and back injuries sustained in last week's Big East tournament. They are also going to be missing forward Rich Barron, who suffered a concussion during the Big East tournament as well. So two major losses for Providence College head coach Kim English in his starting lineup. That's the Mass General Brigham injury report brought to you by Mass General Brigham, the official medical provider of Boston College Athletics. That does it for the Eagles courtside show. Coming up on the other side of this break, Danye and I will get you ready for the opening tip, and we'll have the starting lineups for you as well. This is Boston College basketball from Learfield. Boston College 1992 alum Matt McGovern is the proud owner of the McGovern Auto Group, Boston's fastest growing family of car dealerships. Matt is proud to serve BC, its students, alumni, and their families with 22 dealerships across the Boston Metro and over 5,000 vehicles to choose from. Don't settle for a new vehicle from just anyone. Join your fellow Eagles Matt McGovern, Mark Walker, and Tom Kilgariff at McGovern Auto Group. Visit them online at McGovernAuto.com. Go Eagles! State Electric's commitment to client satisfaction and excellence drives them to deliver best-in-class electrical contracting services on time and on budget. With more than 30 years' experience executing the most challenging and complex commercial, utility power, rail transit, and low-voltage systems projects throughout the Boston area, State Electric gives their clients the peace of mind that they will deliver proven experience and powerful performance on every job. Let's go Eagles and light up the competition. Today's game is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Protect your home and auto. Save when you bundle. Get a quote at Progressive.com. This is the Boston College Sports Network from Learfield. Calling all Boston College students and families searching for the perfect place to stay during your visit to BC? Look no further than the Homewood Suites Needham. Our spacious suites offer all the comforts of home, making them perfect for families and students alike. Start your day off right with our complimentary hot breakfast. Stay connected with free Wi-Fi throughout the hotel and enjoy the convenience of free parking. Our friendly staff is here to make your stay exceptional, and we're conveniently located just a stone's throw away from Boston College. Visit NeedhamBoston.HomewoodSuitesByHilton.com. Homewood Suites, your home away from home near Boston College eBay Motors is here for the ride. 120,000 miles of night drives, daily commutes, and who knows how many. Are we there yet? Through countless fixes, elbow grease, and a new radiator, you kept your ride alive. 
With eBay Motors, you have over 122 million parts to keep it running. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, they'll be the perfect fit every time. Plus, at these prices, well, we're burning rubber, not cash. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Welcome back to the Amica Mutual Pav Pavilion here in Providence, Rhode Island, ahead of tonight's first round NIT matchup between the Boston College Eagles and Providence Friars. They're introducing the starting lineups to the crowd here at the Amp, so let's get them to you. We'll start off with your Boston College Eagles. It's going to be Claudel Harris, Jaden Zachary, Mason Madsen, Quinton Post, and Devin McLaughlin, the same starting five that has started the last 13 games for head coach Earl Grant who comes into his third season here at Chestnut Hill. He is 48-52 and 52 at Boston College. Heading over to the Providence starting lineup, Devontae Ticket Gaines, Jaden Pierre, Darway Garway Duel, Corey Floyd, and Josh Oduro, or D Oduro being the star tonight for Providence with Big East Player of the Year, Devin Carter, missing tonight's game with calf and back injuries. So those are your starting fives for tonight's matchup. The officials, Michael Lucky, Mike Fleury, and Vasily Malios will be your zebras here tonight. Now it's time for the McGovern Keys to the Game, brought to you by McGovern Auto Group, online at mcgovernauto.com. McGovern Auto Group, from our lot to your driveway, our tools help you find a vehicle quickly and easily, and I bring in my partner, Danye Abrams. Danye, what are your McGovern Keys to the Game tonight for the Boston College Eagles? I mean, like, first and foremost, always got to win the battle on the boards. Second, do your dirty work early. Force Oduro to catch the ball outside the paint. He's a very talented player. He had 30 points against a tough Creighton team. And lastly, limit three-point attempts. Providence is 38th in the nation um, with three-point attempts per game. So you will know they want to get in transition, and when they get in transition, they want to tee it high and let it fly. And there's another interesting note. Providence is 20-2 and two when scoring 71 plus points tonight so if they hit the 70 point plateau something BC's been pretty good at, at preventing over the last couple of weeks BC really packed their defense that last two weeks of the season D in wins over Miami and Louisville the final week of the regular season their defense really traveled and all three games of the ACC tournament you felt like Coach Grant's group was much more connected on the defensive end of the floor no they absolutely were when, when you have a quiet team on the road that's, that's dangerous but the Eagles the last you know two or three weeks they've been very vocal on the defensive end over communicating getting a lot of deflections and playing tremendous defense and of course bc led by quinton post who was named to the all acc tournament team just a tremendous performance by quinton down in washington dc and he's going to be ready to take tonight's opening tip against Josh Oduro from Providence. Our head official, Michael Lucky, throws the ball up in the air, and Oduro wins the tip for Providence, and we are underway in round one of the NIT down in Providence, Rhode Island. Jaden Pierre handles out front. He's going to hand off to Garway Duel. He dribbles out right in front of the Providence logo. He swings it over to Corey Floyd. Back to Oduro at the top of the key. Providence running a weave. Pierre dribbles down the lane. He doesn't like what he sees. Pulls it back out. Swings it to Oduro. Against Post. Gets it poked away to the corner to Duel. He drives. Kicks it out for a wide open three at the buzzer. That's an air ball. It's going to be a shock block violation. Jaden Pierre with an air ball from the corner and a great opening defensive possession for Boston College. Yeah, that was tre tremendous defense right there. The Eagles rotating, getting deflections, and forcing Providence into an air ball. BC down on offense for the first time tonight. Jaden Zachary brings the ball up the court. He weaves down the lane. He passes to wide open Devin McLaughlin who lays it in for the first basket of the game. Devin unguarded under the basket. Yeah, right there. Great play right there by Jay-Z. Dragging out the ball screen, finding Devin wide open down low. Providence back on the attack. Floyd and Pierre running a two-man game. Floyd launches a three. It's back rim, no good. Rebound by Mason Madsen, who looks to push. Puts his head down, gets into the front court, pulls it out, gets the ball down to Devin McLaughlin in the post. They play a little two-man game. Mason pulls up for a three. No good. Offensive rebound, Quinton Post, but he gets it taken away. 
by Josh Oduro. Just out-muscled right there, Oduro on post. Now Devontae Ticket gains into the forecourt. Gives it to Corey Floyd, over to Duel. Duel patiently waiting, swings it over to Pierre. Pierre's gonna get a ball screen from Oduro. Oduro rolls, flips it to Ticket Gaines in the corner for three, no good. Oduro though on the offensive glass for Providence, gets it over Quinton Post. He's gonna look to go to work on QP. He swings for a baby hook that's off the back rim, no good, and Mason Madsen again with another rebound for the Eagles. Yeah, right there, good defense. Even though they got a second chance opportunity, the Eagles are locked in on the defensive end. Jane Zachary now pulls up for a three, no good side rim for Jay-Z. Rebound by Floyd, and he looks to push. He gets into the front court, pulls it back out to Pierre, who's gonna run the point here for Providence. He gets into the lane, he goes to the basket, uncontested, and gets the first deuce for Providence. Two to two, 17-30 left here in the first half. Yeah, right there, MJ lost his footing and gave the wide open roll for the point guard to score easy. Now, quickly down the other end, Jaden Zachary on the push. He's gonna get fouled here. The first foul of tonight's ball game is gonna go on Devante Ticket Gaines for a reach in in the lane on Jay-Z and the Eagles will have it underneath the basket here. Zachary will look to inbound for Boston College. Looking for a cutter, gets it into Cardell Harris Jr. who fires and hits a baseline jumper from 15 feet. Silky J right there from Claudel. Yeah, that was a great out of bounds play right there. Everyone, Madsen, he's such a high shooter, so much attention on him. Claudel was wide open. Floyd Jr. now in the forecourt for Providence, swings it over to Duel. Over to Pierre. Pierre driving, goes up, gets tied up, gets it back on a deflection. The ball gets kicked by Devin McLaughlin, which will reset the shot clock to 20 here. 17.07 left in the first half, 4 2 Boston College. Yeah, right there, that's another one where the deflections right there. Devin even got a foot on it. That's how you know players are locked in, getting kicked balls also. Duel looking to inbound, gets it into Oduro, top of the key, swings it over to Pierre. He's looking for somebody in the post, gets it to Duel out on the wing, who's going to get it in the post entry for Oduro, working on Quentin Post, kicks it out, back out to Gaines, back to Oduro, back to Gaines for three, and it's front rim, no good. Mason Madsen with another rebound, his third rebound here in the first three minutes for Boston College. Mason gets it back from Jay-Z, swings it over to Devin McLaughlin, wide open for three, back rim, Quentin Post bats it, out of bounds, it's going to be Providence ball. Yeah, and right now, QP hasn't even touched the ball on the offensive end. And right now, he's screaming, get me the ball. So right on cue, you got to keep the big fella happy. Yeah, the big fella's frustrated, yelling at the Eagles bench down the floor, commanding the ball three minutes into this one. As they run a backdoor lob for Oduro, that misconnects. That was Pierre throwing the lob for Oduro. It was way over his head, out of bounds, turnover for Providence. As Boston College comes back up the floor, Jaden Zachary... Takes it into the front court, swings it over to Mason Madsen. McLaughlin back to Madsen, down to Quinton Post in the post. His shot is no good off the side of the backboard. He a mismatch there on Devontae Ticket Gaines, but couldn't take advantage. Jaden Pierre brings it the other way for Providence, swings it over to Oduro. Duel now with it out front. They're going to go in to Oduro in the post as he backs down QP. This is the matchup everybody came to see. Baseline spin, silky smooth jumper for Oduro is good. 4-4 the score, 15-50 left in the first half. Yeah, you're right. That was a good move right there by Oduro. QP did his job, did the dirty work early, but that's a tough shot to stop. Zachary now to McLaughlin. Mason Madsen coming off a curl, gives it back to Devin McLaughlin, who catches it on the run and lays it up through a ton of contact off the glass. 6-4 BC, 15-30 left in the first half. Yeah, as the crowd fills in, this is a great rivalry. I'm over here pumped already. Now Jaden Zachary with a steal. He gives it to Madsen on the gallop, lays it up and in. It's a quick four-point swing right there for BC, a 4-0 run after Providence had tied it 4-4. It's now 8-4 Boston College, 15 minutes left in the first half. Yeah, and you called it. The Eagles' defense have been locked in right there, right on cue, getting a steal for an easy layup. Pierre now to the front court for Providence. Dribbling out on the Providence logo. Gives it to Oduro out high. Dribble handoff to Duel. Cuts in on the elbow. Back to Floyd now. Working on Devin McLaughlin. Goes to the basket. Gets a step and lays it in. Smooth move right there for Floyd Jr. Makes it 8-6 Boston College. 
Devin McLaughlin now dribbling the ball up the floor for the Eagles. They're going to look to get it in the Quinton Post. On Gaines again with the mismatch. He goes with the baby hook. He can't get it. Rebound to Gaines, who did a great job walling off Quinton Post, the larger man there. Providence back into the front court for Duel. Shoots a three. No good, but it gets back tapped by Oduro. Offensive rebound for Providence. Back out to Gaines. He's going to reward the big man Oduro. Give it to him in the post against QPs. Backing post down. Fadeaway jumper off the glass is good. Another good post move there for Oduro. Four straight now for Providence. Ties the game at eight. Yeah, and right there, you live with that. If Oduro's going to make those shots tough over QP, you still stay one-on-one. -on -one. Don't give Providence easy open threes. Eagles now back on offense. Zachary manning the point. 12 on the shot clock as he holds out front. Long durations here without whistles. Swings it over to Claudel Harris Jr. Five on the shot clock now. Claudel, does he know it? He pulls up for the jumper with one. It's no good. It's long. Rebound by Floyd Jr., who's on the full gallop. Great right quick post. Takes it down low. Decides against it. Kicks it out to Oduro for three. Side rim, no good. Garway Jewel with the offensive rebound. Another offensive rebound for Providence as they reset. They're going to get it back to Oduro in the post. He drives on Quinton Post. Kicks it out to Gaines. 4-3, and he gets fouled in the corner by Mason Madsen. We'll see if it's a two or a three. It's going to be three shots here after the media timeout. So Mason Madsen fouling a three-point shooter to give Providence a chance at their first lead here coming out of the timeout. Yeah, right there. I didn't see it. It was in the corner. Um, I saw the shot go up, but Providence is doing a tremendous job on the offensive glass. I mean, right now they have, what is it, uh, three offensive rebounds to the Eagles zero, and that's what's keeping Providence in this game right now. Yeah, BC also in the midst of a scoring drought, two minutes and two seconds, which is something they can fall victim to over the course of the season. Boston College 8, Providence College 8, 13-15 left to go. In the first half here from the Amica Mutual Pavilion, we'll have more after this. You're listening to Boston College Basketball from Learfield. Mass General Brigham Sports Medicine. Personalized sports medicine care driven by research and determination. Top specialists who understand your athletic dreams, goals, and the need to get back to them. Together, we'll write your comeback story. Mass General Brigham Sports Medicine. Call 877-SPORT-01 to start your comeback story today. Life is full of choices. How to manage your time, your energy, and even your money. But what if you were given the chance to stop and get rewarded for the way you want to bank? That's the power of Evolve Rewards Checking from the Village Bank. Rewarding banking for the way you choose to live. Visit village-bank.com and evolve today. The Village Bank. Member FDIC. Member DIF. Source Promo is the best choice for your company's branded promotional products and wearable needs. Source Promo works with you like an agency would and provides better service and pricing than the mega promo places you see on TV. When your brand or business needs help finding just the right thing for your promotional activation, sponsorship, staff engagement, or customer appreciation event, go to SourcePromo.com to get the conversation started. Source Promo is proud to be a partner of Boston College Athletics. Go Eagles! Bud Light proudly sponsors BC Athletics. Easy to drink, easy to enjoy. Please enjoy responsibly. Kevin Collins filling in for Josh Maurer and Danya Abrams from the Amica Mutual Pavilion here in Providence, Rhode Island. The first round of the NIT, the National Invitation Tournament. Boston College visiting the Providence College Friars, renewing an old Big East rivalry. We're tied at eight here, 13-15 to go in the first half. Danier, it's been a little bit of a slugfest through the first six and a half minutes here. BC seems to be struggling a little bit on the offensive end. No, they are. They're getting good shots, uh, taking care of the ball, zero turnovers. But the problem is Providence is out rebounding BC 9-3. to three, And that's where the details and detention uh, matter. You know, if the Eagles can get them up there and secure one shot, have a better shot um, at, at getting the victory. And also... 
Providence is doing a tremendous job on QP. Just don't want to watch that. Don't want to get him frustrated. They have a smaller guy on him, and he thinks he should have the ball more often. Yeah, what do you make of that, Danier? They have Devontae Ticket Gaines, who's kind of a, a, a forward. He's six foot seven. Mm -hmm. He's guarding the seven footer post instead of Oduro. Uh, what do you make of that strategy by first-year head coach Kim English for Providence? Well, it's kind of brilliant because if you think about it, QP, in the beginning of a lot of games, he shoots a lot of threes and gets going that way. So they have someone that could defend him on the perimeter. Now they're making QP start inside out. Gaines will have three free throws as he makes the first one. He was fouled going into the media timeout, shooting a corner three by Mason Madsen. Makes the first, bends the knees, makes the second as well. Nothing but net, 10 to eight now. Providence 13-15 to go here in the first half. And BC will look to get things going offensively here. Providence on a 6-0 run over the last 90 seconds of gameplay. As Gaines gets the third free throw, bends the knees, nothing but net. Perfect on all three and gives Providence an 11 to eight first to half lead here. As the ball is inbound to Claudel Harris Jr. And he will take his turn playing the point. Same starting five for the Eagles. Harris Jr. looking for help here, trying to find Jade Zachary. Gets it out to Zachary with 15 on the shot clock. Back screen for Post. Post trying to get the ball on, on Gaines. He can't get it. McLaughlin throws the lob to QP. QP down on the block and he gets blocked by Oduro. Goes back up again and gets fouled. So good work down there by Quinton Post. He was guarded by Devontae Ticket Gaines at first, then doubled by Oduro, Danye got his own offensive rebound off the block shot and earns a trip to the free throw line. Yeah, no, he did a great job. It's tough. They're, they're fronting him, and they're making Oduro come from the back to block it. QP just has to be patient, and he will get the ball and score early and often. But you can't get it down to him the first time. Post bends his knees for the first free throw and connects. It's also of note, Danye, that that is the second foul on Devontae Ticket Gaines here early in the game, and Kim English playing with a shortened bench without Carter and without Barron. That's something to keep an eye on. It is. QP's coming off a tremendous ACC tournament. The first player in 10 years to have 60 points and 30 rebounds with the likes of, uh, who was it? Jason uh, Tatum and yep. Zion Williamson. There you go. See? Two you former Duke, got my back. Two former Duke Blue, Blue Devils. Uh, Post makes both free throws. 11 to 10 now. Providence leads. Donald Tan Jr. now into the game for Boston College, replacing Mason Madsen. And Oduro picks up a little nickel dimer on... It looks like Quinton Post. A little nickel-dime hand check here at the top of the key on a dribble drive. And Coach Grant not happy with that. That is Post's first foul of the game. Floyd Jr. to inbound for Providence. Gets it into Oduro out deep here. Swings it over to Gaines. Back to Pierre who launches a deep, deep three. Front rim, rebound tap. Donald Han Jr. comes down with it. He's on the gallop into the front court for BC. Donald Han coming off an excellent ACC tournament down in Washington, D.C. Swings it over to Quinton Post. He's going to look to dribble drive on Oduro. Puts up a little right-handed floater and it goes in over Oduro. Really tough shot off the dribble there for Post. 12-11 Boston College, 12 minutes left in the first half. And that's why they had Gaines on him up top. When Orduro was on him, QP has the, just the advantage with the speed. They go into Oduro now, guarded by Quinton Post, into the post, swings it out to Floyd. He's on the dribble drive, nowhere to go, kicks it out to Pierre. Corner three, nothing but net. Silky jumper there for Pierre, puts Providence up 14-12, 11-35 left to go in the first half. Yeah, you're right. That was a tough shot right there by Pierre. Silky smooth, all net. Zachary, been quiet here early, gets his pocket pick by Ticket Gaines, who's on the gallop. He dunks it through. Uncontested dunk for Gaines off a sloppy turnover by Jaden Zachary. Uncharacteristic, and the ball came loose after that dunk, so we're going to get the under-12 media timeout, but a spurt right there, a 5-0 spurt for Providence after BC had taken a 12-11 lead. Five in a row by the Friars makes it 16-12. 11-21 left here in the first half, Don. Yeah, you know, you're right. That was great defense right there by Gaines. Not only can he guard QP, but he's guarding the point guard. Great steal and finish hard at the rim with the 16-12 lead. The Eagles' first turnover costs him nearly here as Vince in a slam dunk for the Friars. Boston College trails Providence 16-12. 11-21 left to play here in the first half from Providence. You're listening to the first round of 
the NIT. This is Boston College Basketball from Learfield. State Electric's commitment to client satisfaction and excellence drives them to deliver best-in-class electrical contracting services on time and on budget. With more than 30 years' experience executing the most challenging and complex commercial, utility power, rail transit, and low-voltage systems projects throughout the Boston area, State Electric gives their clients the peace of mind that they will deliver proven experience and powerful performance on every job. Let's go Eagles and light up the competition. Here... The Eagles soar. This is the Boston College Sports Network from Learfield. Great Hill Dental is the premier dental group in the Boston area. Winners of Boston Magazine Top Dentist five years in a row. The dentists of Great Hill Dental are the best in their field, caring for patients of all ages. Great Hill Dental provides a whole health dentistry approach with all specialists on staff providing coordinated care in one location. Visit Great Hill Dental in Boston, Somerville, Braintree, Peabody, or Chelmsford and schedule an appointment today online at greathilldental.com. Not to brag, but Progressive's Name Your Price tool is mankind's greatest tool ever. Even better than the wheel. Sure, without the wheel, we wouldn't have modern transportation or funny videos of dogs riding skateboards. But without the Name Your Price tool, we wouldn't have easy access to auto insurance options based on our budget. And, well, cars do need wheels. They also need insurance. And insurance never goes flat. Learn more about the greatest tool ever. The Name Your Price tool at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Not available in all states. Eagles fans looking for the best game day snack? For a snack that soars above the rest, pick up Eastern Standard Provisions Gourmet Soft Pretzels. The official soft pretzel of Boston College Athletics. Find them in the concessions at Connie or at Whole Foods Market in the freezer aisle or at esprovisions.com. That's e-sprovisions.com. Back here at the Amica Mutual Pavilion, Providence holds a 16-12 lead over Boston College with 11-21 to go here in the first half. Danier, an uncharacteristic turnover from Jaden Zachary led to that last runout for Providence. Five quick points after BC had taken the lead back. Kind of feels like the Friars have come out with some momentum here. We were unsure as to you know what their motivation level would be like without Carter in the starting lineup tonight, but it seems like they've come to play. Yeah, you know, when one man's down, there's next man's opportunity. And this Providence team, you know, they're not just going to roll over playing here at home in the Amp Pavilion. You know, I mean, it's, it's a tight game. The Eagles are shooting 42%. Providence shooting 43%. And like you said, those extra offensive rebounds and turnovers, that's the only reason why there's a four-point lead. Mason Madsen back into the game as Jaden Zachary is going to get a rest. Prince of League Bay also checks in for Boston College. Madsen is going to bring the ball up, swing it over to Post at the top of the key, who gives it to Claudel Harris Jr. on the white wing. Back to Post. Dribble drive, kicks it out to Prince of League Bay, freshly checked in in the corner. Swings it over to Harris Jr. Now on the baseline, pulls up for a jumper. Back rim, no good. Rebound for Duel for Providence as they look to expand upon their largest lead as they lead 16-12 to with just under 11 left in the first half. Pierre gets a crushing screen from Oduro, but it was moving. An illegal screen there called on the Providence big man, Josh Oduro. Yeah, right there, that was, uh, as a big man, I love the screen, but unfortunately you can't do that in the in game play. That's one of those screens you do at practice to let the, the practice players know, like, yeah, we're here to play, but... With the new rules, you can't really hit them like that. Providence going a little bit bigger as they have big man Rafael Castro take the place of ticket gains in their lineup. BC back on offense. Quinton Post with the ball at the top of the key. Dribble handoff to Mason Madsen. Drives down the lane. Pull-up jumper for Mason is good. Silky smooth jumper there for Mason Madsen. 16-14 Providence. That's so hard to guard. When you have QP and the big man out there, the rim protector has to watch a three-point shooter. That gives so much space for the guards down low to score. Oduro now with the ball at the top of the key for Providence. Claudel Harris Jr. dogging Jaden Pierre who gets the dribble handoff. 
the pass is stolen by Mason Madsen. Bad pass by Pierre Madsen. Up into the front court, swings it over to Donald Hand Jr. for a floater, no good, but tapped in by Quentin Post. And a quick timeout by Kim English. Two straight turnovers for Providence College, leading to two straight Boston College baskets. And that leads first year head coach Kim English into a quick timeout here. 16 to 16, 10.02 left in the first half. And right there, that's BC basketball. Running the system, no quick shots, getting a lot of cuts, but playing great defense to e lead to easy offense in transition. Right there, Han Jr. had a great move, froze his uh, defender, and QP right there doing what QP does, getting a nice easy tip in. Yeah, because of the transition following the live ball turnover, Donald Han put up a, a little right-handed floater on the right wing, and nobody boxed out Quinton Post. He beat all of the Providence bigs. He beat Oduro and Castro down the floor, and that tip-in D was uncontested. So great hustle there from QP, and he's rewarded with an easy two. It was, and that's what you love. When the big fellas run the floor, you, you know, you, you want to reward them whether you pass it to them or you take a shot. We know that we're there to clear up any misses. And I tell you, it's more rewarding to get an offensive rebound to put back than the pass. All right, so Kim English with a quick 30-second timeout gets his troops together, and Providence now back on offense. Led by point guard Pierre, brings it up over half court. Hands it off to Castro, swings it over to Floyd Jr. He's going to drive the ball on Mason Madsen, and he misses a very easy layup, but it's tipped back in by Castro. He beat Quinton Post to the offensive glass that time and gets rewarded with a tip back to 18-16 Providence. Claudel Harris Jr. back into the front court, swings it over to Madsen. Into the corner for Hand Jr., who misses a three, and Providence back with the ball up two as they push into the forecourt with their point guard, Pierre. Pierre searching for an open man, finds Ticket Gaines, freshly checked back into the game for Providence. He's going to swing it back out top to Josh Oduro. Back to Pierre, looking to work on Claudel Harris Jr. He drives, pulls up for a jumper, does not get the roll, and Prince Alibe has the rebound on the defensive end for Boston College. Hands off to Claudel Harris Jr., swings it over to Donald Hand. Working on the left side. Swings across court to Mason Madsen now on the right wing. Down on the right baseline to Prince Elite Bay. Pump fake. Gets his man in the air and gets fouled. He was trying to draw a two-shot foul there on the big man Castro for Providence. But they're going to rule that the foul came on the floor. Probably a pretty good call there. It looked like Prince hadn't started to go up yet. Yeah, no, absolutely. That was a, a, the, the right call. Prince right there I think has to be more aggressive down low. He has the, the quickness. Um, advantage over Castro, but as he's coming out, doesn't matter. Yeah, 8.53 left in the first half. Coach Earl Grant's going to make a, a wholesale change here. Quinton Post coming out, Prince of Bay coming out, MJ Harris coming out. The ball's inbounded to Mason Madsen. He's going to swing it out to Devin McLaughlin, who fires a three and connects. Devin from the top of the key gives Boston College the lead back. 1918 BC, eight and a half left in the first half. Yeah, we know Han Jr. can fill it up. Great seeing him take that shot. Excuse me, um, Devin taking that shot right there. Devin back into the game. Armani Mighty now guarding Oduro, who's checked in for Quinton Post. Oduro kicks back out to Floyd, who nails a three. It was a, a loose ball for a brief moment. Mason Madsen fell asleep on the wing, and Floyd made him pay as Providence nails the three. 21-19 Friars, 8-10 left to go in the first half. Yeah, we said it earlier, the um, keys. You got to keep Providence off the three-point line. They want to shoot them early and often. McLaughlin now in the front court. Dribble handoff to Donald Hand Jr. Wild jumper. No good off the side rim. Rebound to Jaden Pierre. Flings it up the court quickly to Gaines. They're now going to pull it back out. Floyd Jr. is going to reset the offense and get it to Oduro at the top of the key. Oduro working on Armani Mighty. Picks up his dribble. He's got nowhere to go. Gives it back to Pierre, who drives it right down Main Street and gets an easy, uncontested two. Armani Mighty slow there to protect the rim, and that stretches Providence's lead back out. 23-19 Friars. Yeah, right there. Mighty doesn't have to pressure Oduro that much. Way out there. We know he can shoot the three, but not by the NIT logo. Zachary now running the Eagles offense. Media timeout next whistle. Armani Mighty picks up his dribble. Looking for an open man. Hands it off to Jaden Zachary. Wide open baseline jumper for Jay-Z Short. Mighty is going to get called, I believe, for an over-the-back foul battling Castro, the big man for Providence. And that's going to be 
a loose ball foul on Armani Mighty, his first foul, and that's going to bring us to our under eight media timeout with Providence now leading Boston College 23 19, 7 13 left to go in the first half. Yeah, it might be doing what he's supposed to do. I like that right there, going for the offensive um, rebound. I mean, I thought there was a lot more contact going on, but they got him right there with the ticky tack over the back. BC just really cold, especially shooting from the outside in this one so far. Jaden Zachary, 0 for 2. Claudel Harris Jr., 1 for 3. Uh, Mason Madsen, 2 for 3, I guess the bright spot. But from 3, the Eagles only 1 out of 5. The only 3 coming from Devin McLaughlin. The Friars are 2 for 9. So both teams kind of cold shooting from the outside here at the get-go. Providence 23, Boston College 19, 7.13 left to go here in the first half. We're going to take this media timeout. You're listening to Boston College Basketball from Learfield. And the game goes into overtime. But the game goes into overtime. The choice to enjoy is easy. Bud Light, easy to drink, easy to enjoy. Order Bud Light online today. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Bud Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Be sure to visit Apex Entertainment in Marlboro, located right off Route 495. Apex is the largest family entertainment center in New England. It has over 100,000 square feet of pure fun. You can enjoy over 30 lanes of bowling, including Candle Pen, a multi-level go-kart track, Apex Kids, sports simulators, bumper cars, laser tag, mini golf, ropes course, and arcade. Also, don't forget about their chef-inspired menu in the Pit Stop Tavern with over 65 gluten-free items. Apex Entertainment, where perfect weather is always guaranteed. Go Eagles! College sports fans now have access to hundreds of weekly podcasts that zero in on the college sports world. Now available in the Varsity Podcast Network and part of the new Varsity app. The app is free and available from wherever you get your favorite apps. Download the Varsity app today to have access to hundreds of national podcasts as well as your favorite team-focused podcasts. The Varsity Podcast Network, now available for free on the Varsity app. Download from the App Store and listen today. Tonight's game is brought to you by Great Hill Dental, a proud partner of Boston College Athletics. Great Hill Dental, the Boston area's premier dental group. Kevin Collins, Danier Abrams, back with you for round one of the NIT from Providence, Rhode Island. The Providence College Friars leading BC 23-19, 7-13 to go here in the first half. And Danier, let's talk about the game plan for Providence College first-year head coach Kim English. It seems like the Friars have really succeeded here mucking up the Eagles offense as they only have 19 points 13 minutes into this game. No, they do. And Providence does a great job of uh, slowing you down on the defensive end, switching everything. But they want to muck the game up. And Providence sends at least two or three guys to the offensive rebounds. And they want to basically muck the game up. You know, BC's used to getting up and down, playing high and free. But Providence slows you down and makes you score. Quinton Post, Claudel Harris Jr., and Mason Madsen, the original starting lineup back on the floor for head coach Earl Grant as Providence looks to attack to the basket to our right. Josh Oduro with a pull-up jump shot is no good. Claudel Harris Jr. with the rebound pushes into the front court. Let's see if they try to get some of the bigs some touches here for Boston College since the outside shooting has been so cold. Claudel Harris Jr. pulls up for a long three and drains it. Right in my face, says MJ. Cold shooting my behind as he nails a three, making it Providence 23, BC 22. His eyes lit up when Oduro was there. Oduro set some massive screens out there. And so Oduro sets a screen to get Pierre free, uh, free three, and he answers a quick three right back at you for Providence as they push the lead back out to 26-22, 6-12 left here in the first half. Mason Madsen now on the attack for the Eagles with a, a little runner that's blocked by Devontae Ticket Gaines. The rebound was grabbed by newly checked in big man for Providence Santoro. Donovan Santoro, the freshman guard out of Los Angeles, 
but unfortunately for him, he caught the rebound while his foot was on the baseline, and that's going to give the ball back to Boston College. Fortunate for the Eagles as Madsen had his shot blocked by Ticket Gaines, Danier, who plays a little bit bigger, I think, than he looks. No, absolutely. We, we've said that. Gaines has been everywhere on the defensive end. Deflections, blocks. You know, he's a tremendous defender. Quinton Post gets the inbounds pass, going to work on Oduro. Left-handed hook, no good. Good defense that time by Oduro. He's going to bring the ball up himself into the front court. He's going to attack Quinton Post, who's going to pick up his second foul. Needless foul picked up by Post right there with his chest. All you have to do right there is move your feet, Danier, and use your chest to defend, but he brought his arms down and extended his forearms, and that's going to get called every time. You know, absolutely right. That there, that's what you call a frustration foul right there. QP has been getting the ball a lot. Oduro's touching it every other possession, and QP's playing D. That was what you call a, a get-back foul. So two, fo two fouls right now for Post, and now he's going to get his third foul. Wow. A touch foul again on the inbounds. And he's going to pick up his third foul about 30 feet from the basket. And that's likely going to put Quinton Post on the bench for the rest of the first half as Elijah Strong now checks in, replacing QP. But that's a gigantic development for Boston College losing their star all-ACC performer. It was. And right there, he got caught up. Oduro kind of gave him a shot to the chest with his elbow, and QP got caught with it, the, the, the retaliation. Pierre now back in for Providence, fires a three, no good. But another offensive rebound for Providence, dug out by Floyd, he fires a three, no good. Eagles dodge a major bullet right there, both threes. Pretty good looks for the Friars. Rebound Devin McLaughlin, hands off to Claudel Harris Jr. Now attacking in the front court. BC could really use a basket here. Claudel going to have to be the man without QP. He pulls up for a jumper and drills it right in Floyd's face. And similar to the ACC tournament, the Clemson game, when Quinton Post got in foul trouble, Claudel Harris is going to have to take over the Eagles' offense. And yeah, you called it right there, right on cue. Claudel doing Claudel things, making it happen on the offensive end. Providence back on the attack, running their point through Pierre here. He's on the right wing, guarded by Mason Madsen. Shakes Madsen, dribble drives. Passes stolen by Claudel Harris Jr., who pulls up for a wide open three, back rim, no good. Ball's tipped out by Devin McLaughlin, trying to back tap that to get the Eagles another possession, but the ball goes into the front row, so it's going to be Providence College ball, but good steal right there by Claudel Harris Jr. He pulled up for a three. Danier, do you like the shot selection? You know what? He was feeling it. I like that I like that shot normally, but right there he had Jay-Z streaking on the right, so he could have probably get one more, did the right thing, getting the steal, pushing it up, but right there, even though you're hot, find the wide open man. At, to note here on defense, McLaughlin has now switched on to Oduro with post out of the game. Elijah Strong in for QP Garden Floyd. And McLaughlin will grab a defensive rebound. Oduro with a point blank look. Could not get it to spin around the rim and in. And McLaughlin clears the rebound for BC. Another bullet dodge there for the Eagles. McLaughlin brings it into the front court. Kicks it out to the right wing for Madsen, who's going to step back for a three. No good. McLaughlin got shoved right there on the, on the rebound. No call by Oduro. Looked like a two-handed shove to me as Pierre is going to bring it up for Providence. He's going to attack Mason Madsen. The ball gets punched away by Jaden Zachary. Hands to Strong. Back to Zachary. Back to Strong, who lays it in. Great transition right there by Elijah Strong and Jaden Zachary. 26-26, four minutes left to go here in the first half. Strong got lucky there, had a little flat tire. Looked like he wanted to go up and dunk it, but the good thing is he just made the easy layup. We dip under four here at the amp, 26-26. Oduro in the post is guarding, uh, guarded by Devin McLaughlin. They're going to call a block on McLaughlin. He looked like he got run over by Josh Oduro. He took the one bump, he anticipated the second bump, took it in the chest, and collapsed onto the floor. You almost automatically see that called the charge, Danier. No, absolutely. The first one, if you absorb the contact, the second one, you have to not back, back down and bang him the second time. So 90% of the time, the second one is a charge. I don't know how that's a block. It should just be a no call. Yeah, it's either a no call or a charge, one or the other. And that's what Boston College head coach Earl Grant is talking to the officials about. Getting a, a little bit of flashbacks from the UVA game here, partner. I have a little yes. bit of 
PTSD from that 18 to four free throw discrepancy and a couple of calls that went against the Eagles in the last minute of regulation. I mean, let's face it, this is Big East basketball. You, you know there's gonna be a lot of contact against a team that doesn't really set screens. So they know the precedent. The Eagles have to play through it and be stronger. That is the sixth team foul on the Eagles, the first on Devin McLaughlin. So it'll be a non-shooting foul. The ball will be inbounded by Providence from the baseline when we come back from this next media timeout. Providence 26, BC 26, 344 remaining in the first half. You're listening to Boston College Basketball from Learfield. Boston College 1992 alum Matt McGovern is the proud owner of the McGovern Auto Group, Boston's fastest growing family of car dealerships. Matt is proud to serve BC, its students, alumni, and their families with 22 dealerships across the Boston Metro and over 5,000 vehicles to choose from. Don't settle for a new vehicle from just anyone. Join your fellow Eagles Matt McGovern, Mark Walker, and Tom Kilgariff at McGovern Auto Group. Visit them online at McGovernAuto.com. Go Eagles! The maroon and gold live here. This is the Boston College Sports Network from Learfield. Looking for the perfect place to stay while you explore all that Boston has to offer? Look no further than the Homewood Suites Brookline. At the Homewood Suites Brookline, we offer spacious and comfortable suites, ideal for families and students visiting Boston College. Enjoy our complimentary hot breakfast, free Wi-Fi, and our relaxing pool and fitness center. Make your Boston College experience memorable at the Homewood Suites Brookline. Book your suite today and experience the warmth of home away from home. Visit bostonbrookline.homewoodsuites.com. Homewood Suites Brookline, your Boston College destination. Life is full of choices. How to manage your time, your energy, and even your money. But what if you were given the chance to stop and get rewarded for the way you want to bank? That's the power of Evolve Rewards Checking from the Village Bank. Rewarding banking for the way you choose to live. Visit village-bank.com and evolve today. The Village Bank. Member FDIC. Member DIF. Boston College and Providence College tied at 26, 344 left to go here in the first half. Yeah, right here the Eagles have strong out there trying to connect and play great D as Providence inbounds the ball. Coming in. And they almost steal it in the corner. Trap, Jay-Z does get the steal. Yeah, Jay-Z gets the steal, heads it to Mason Madsen. We're having a power issue here at the amp, ironically enough, as the ball gets kicked out to Claudel Harris Jr., who tries to dunk. Ball gets kicked back out to Devin McLaughlin, to Jaden Zachary. Boston apologize for any technical difficulties, folks. They've lost power here on media row. Devin McLaughlin going to work on Garway Duel in the post, and Garway Duel swats the ball out of bounds. Again, apologize for any technical difficulties we're having here as the power, where they're appearing to have a power issue at the table. with a shot. Gar All right, Prov Providence, hopefully we're back with you folks. Providence has now taken a 28-26 lead. Three minutes to go here in the first half. Boston College... Schools will take home the prestigious Learfield Directors Cup for the 2023-24 college athletic season. You can follow the standings of your favorite school or alma mater at L Directors Cup on Twitter and online at thedirectorscup.com. That's thedirectorscup.com and L Directors Cup on Twitter. Trophies will be awarded in June 2024 to the winning institutions in all competitive divisions. Learfield Directors Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics. 
State Electric's commitment to client satisfaction and excellence drives them to deliver best-in-class electrical contracting services on time and on budget. With more than 30 years' experience executing the most challenging and complex commercial, utility power, rail transit, and low-voltage systems projects throughout the Boston area, State Electric gives their clients the peace of mind that they will deliver proven experience and powerful performance on every job. Let's go Eagles and light up the competition. Boston College 1992 alum Matt McGovern is the proud owner of the McGovern Auto Group. Boston's fastest. All right. Apologies for the technical difficulties, folks. We lost power here at the scorer's table, and they're trying to resolve the issue here at center court. But Providence College now leads this game 30-28 to with 139 left to go here in the first half. BC in possession. And again, apologize for any technical difficulties. We lost main power here at the scorer's table as they're looking to hopefully fix that. For the rest of the scorer's table, we were able to, by the grace of God, find a power outlet that, that was working thanks to BC Athletic Director Blake James and Associate Athletic Director Craig Anderson were kind enough to give us some of their power, partner. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. They, they just happened... The whole row went down. We're not the only one having technical difficulties. There's people scrambling to our left big time, man. <laughs> well, you All handled right. that well, partner. All right. Providence back on offense with a two-point lead. 125 to go here in the half. Gaines pulls up for three. No good. Rebound Mason Madsen for the Eagles. He's galloping into the front court. Madsen swings it over to Jaden Zachary. Elijah Strong, as we mentioned, in the game for Quinton Post, who has three fouls. Ball goes to Madsen, who throws a lob to Devin McLaughlin, who slams it home to tie the game at 30, with one minute left to go here in the first half. And that was a great pass right there by Madsen, getting by Gaines, who's been everything on defense, shows his athletic ability, Devin. Source promo is the best. 31 seconds, six second differential between the shot and game clock. Coach Earl Grant instructs Claudel Harris to back this out. The Eagles are going to drain some clock here. Claudel Harris Jr., guarded by Floyd of Providence, dribbling out on the Providence logo, shakes to his left, blows by Floyd, gets contacted on his way up, and that should be a two shot foul on Floyd, sending Claudel Harris Jr. to the free throw line for two. Yeah, no, you're right on cue right there. Great move by Claudel, deferring the screen, going downhill, had a wide open lane. And right there, Floyd basically just bumped him so hard, took him out the air, couldn't even get the shot up. Yeah, great move to his left there by MJ, drawing the foul, 14.8 now on the game clock. Claudel Harris Jr. with two shots and a chance to give the lead back to Boston College. Dribbles, studies at the line. First free throw rims out. No good for Claudel. Ordinarily an extremely good free throw shooter. Claudel came into today's game at 73% from the foul line. He's kind of chuckling to himself about missing that one. Yeah, he's having some more words with Floyd. I mean, he left Floyd, like, at the Providence logo with that crossover. So Floyd had no choice but to get back and foul him hard. All right, Claudel with the second of two free throws here, trying to give BC a lead. 14.8 seconds left, and he switches the second. 31 to 30, Boston College, 14.8 seconds left here in the first half. Providence will hold for the last shot. They're going to run their offense through the point guard, Pierre. Pierre dribbles it over the timeline, guarded by Claudel Harris, Jr., Drives to his right, picked up by Jaden Zachary. Forced back out, great defense by Jaden Zachary, who knocks it off of Pierre's foot, and that is a turnover with 0.9 seconds left in the first half. Great, great lockdown defense there by Jay-Z. Yeah, he got, Coach Grant has a 30-second. He could use it right now. Yep, BC still has their use-it-or-lose-it timeout, but as we know, Coach Grant, not a huge fan of calling timeouts in these, in these situations. Yeah. Well, right here, he got a, an extended timeout with the substitution, he so he's able to, to get it. If I was so, strong, throw it to the to the middle. Nah, they're just going to inbound it to Jay-Z, and the clock is going to run out. Strong just 
casually will say pass the ball into the backcourt. The Eagles more than content to go into the first half locker room with a one-point lead. All in all, Danier, I think, you know, not the worst result. BC definitely didn't bring their A game out of the gate here in Providence. So all in all, having played, I'd say, a subpar performance to what we saw down in Washington, D.C., you're happy with a one-point lead here. No, I mean, as physical as this game's been and what's going on back and forth, I mean, you would think Providence should be up at least double digits. For the Eagles to be up one point at halftime, you got to give credit to the coaching staff and players for fighting through this adversity in a tough area to play. Yeah, and again, speaking of adversity, we want to just apologize to our listeners, too. We got knocked off the air twice here at the Amica Mutual Pavilion. They are frantically trying to put out some type of issue down at center court. They've knocked us off the air twice. They've knocked out... It might have been three times. They're still, they're still it's, trying to it's, figure it it's out. It's remarkable kind of how Mickey Mouse this operation is. I hate to say it, but there are people here trying to do a broadcast, and they're just pulling plugs left and right, knocking us off the air. But hey... Welcome to Providence, right, Danye? <laughs> well, I want to tell you, you handled that well. You're wearing two hats today, doing the engineering and that, and I don't think I've seen you move that fast all year. All so right. I appreciate you getting us back up on the air, well, partner. And thanks to uh, BC Athletic Director Blake James, who helped me run the cable, and to Craig Anderson, the Associate Athletic Director, who ran the second cable to get our mixer and our access back on the air. But we're going to go to our halftime show here from the Amica Mutual Pavilion. Boston College 31, Providence 30 here in the first round of the NIT. We'll have the Village Bank halftime show coming up after this break. You're listening to Boston College Basketball from Learfield. The game goes into overtime. But the game goes into overtime. The choice to enjoy is easy. Bud Light, easy to drink, easy to enjoy. Order Bud Light online today. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Bud Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Mass General Brigham Sports Medicine. Personalized sports medicine care driven by research and determination. Top specialists who understand your athletic dreams, goals, and the need to get back to them. Together, we'll write your comeback story. Mass General Brigham Sports Medicine. Call 877-SPORT-01 to start your comeback story today. Your home for the Eagles. This is the Boston College Sports Network from Learfield. eBay Motors is here for the ride. Go ahead, feel your engine. Admire that perfectly installed exhaust. Your vehicle's moving along this freeway like it was made from fresh installs and a whole lot of love. With eBay Motors, you get over 122 million parts to keep it running. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, they'll be the perfect fit every time. Plus, at these prices, well, we're burning rubber, not cash. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Great Hill Dental is the premier dental group in the Boston area. Winners of Boston Magazine Top Dentist five years in a row. The dentists of Great Hill Dental are the best in their field, caring for patients of all ages. Great Hill Dental provides a whole health dentistry approach with all specialists on staff providing coordinated care in one location. Visit Great Hill Dental in Boston, Somerville, Braintree, Peabody, or Chelmsford and schedule an appointment today online at greathilldental.com. are in the books. Welcome to the Village Bank Halftime Show, brought to you by Village Bank. Your village, your bank. The Village Bank Halftime Show begins now. Near identical stats between BC and Providence in the first half were nodded at 30 at the break. This halftime report is brought to you by Village Bank. With a proud history spanning more than a century, the Village Bank is now the only remaining mutual community bank headquartered in Newton. Village Bank, your village, your bank. Alan Wood back inside the Learfield Network Studios. Two other ACC teams came up short of the big dance but made the NIT. One of those coming up at 9. That's Virginia Tech hosting Richmond Hokies. Went 14-2 in Blacksburg this year. 
And tomorrow at 8 p.m., App State heads over to the Joel to battle Wake Forest. For the NCAA tournament, five conference teams qualified in total. One of them just barely. That would be Virginia, who's playing in the first four against Colorado State at 9-10 tonight. On Thursday, UNC gets things underway at 245. The Heels, the top seed, despite losing the ACC title game, get the winner of Howard and Wagner. Right now, Wagner leads 38-29 early in the second half from Dayton. And later on that day, NC State, 11 seed, will face Texas Tech in Pittsburgh. Tip-off set for 940. And how about the pack? They got the auto bid after upsetting UNC in the conference championship. That's what's on deck for the ACC. We'll step aside and get you the headlines from the first round next. Eagles and Friars tied at 30. More after this. You're listening to Boston College Basketball from Learfield. State Electric's commitment to client satisfaction and excellence drives them to deliver best-in-class electrical contracting services on time and on budget. With more than 30 years' experience executing the most challenging and complex commercial, utility power, rail transit, and low-voltage systems projects throughout the Boston area, State Electric gives their clients the peace of mind that they will deliver proven experience and powerful performance on every job. Let's go Eagles and light up the competition. We work hard and play even harder. That's why Had Jars believes that you should feel your best all the time. From casual wear to the perfect tailored suit for all the big and tall guys out there. Do yourself a favor and dress like the Eagles do on game day. Get to Had Jars, where they have been delivering confidence to the better than average man for the past 50 years. Visit Had Jars showrooms in Quincy or Burlington or go to big-tallo.com for more information. That's big-tallo.com. Go BC! Whether it's a Hail Mary or the Frozen Four, this is the Boston College Sports Network from Learfield. Be sure to visit Apex Entertainment in Marlboro, located right off Route 495. Apex is the largest family entertainment center in New England. It has over 100,000 square feet of pure fun. You can enjoy over 30 lanes of bowling, including Candle Pen, a multi-level go-kart track, Apex Kids, sports simulators, bumper cars, laser tag, mini golf, ropes course, and arcade. Also, don't forget about their chef-inspired menu in the Pit Stop Tavern with over 65 gluten-free items. Apex Entertainment, where perfect weather is always guaranteed. Go Eagles! Whether you're playing for fun or playing for keeps at the Massachusetts State Lottery, it means so much more than just money for you, because we've been giving bets in 72. Your wallet explodes while we're plowing the roads, and we're building schools while you're buying a pool. So try your lucky numbers you can see for yourself. Everyone's a winner in the Commonwealth. Everyone's a winner in the Commonwealth. College and Providence College in the NIT first round. We're locked at 30 at the half. And we're back on the Village Bank Halftime Report. It's Colin Wood here with you from Studio 3. Time now for the out-of-town scoreboard as the madness has officially begun. The other three one seats were awarded to UConn, Houston, and Purdue. Little surprise there. And coming in at the two seats are Iowa State after winning the Big 12, Arizona, Marquette, and Tennessee, even though they got stomped by Mississippi State in the SEC tourney. We'll shift the focus to Thursday. The opening game features Mississippi State and Michigan State quarter after noon. Spartans at 19 and 14. Well, they found a way in with some key wins. Meanwhile, in the evening from Salt Lake, it's going to be Gonzaga hosting the 30 and 3 McNeese Cowboys. That's in the 5-12 matchup. Bulldogs came up short in the WCC title game to St. Mary's. And the tip-off for that one set for 7-25. 20 down, tied up at 30. Coming up, we'll send it back to Providence with KO Courtside. We'll get you a couple highlights from the first half and get you locked in for the finish from Amica. You're listening to the Boston College Sports Network from Learfield. Mass General Brigham Sports Medicine. Personalized sports medicine care driven by research and determination. Top specialists who understand your athletic dreams, goals, and the need to get back to them. Together, we'll write your comeback story. Mass General Brigham Sports Medicine. Call 877-SPORT-01 to start your comeback story today. The 
passion, the tradition, the rivalries. Sirius XM is your destination for all things college sports, and we've got you covered. On ACC Radio, there is complete coverage of every school in the conference, including live games, plus 24-7 talk and analysis. So cheer along on the Sirius XM app and listen to your favorite team anywhere. And now you can get three months of Sirius XM free. Subscribe now. See all for details at SiriusXM.com slash ACC Sports. For Boston. For Boston, for Boston, we sing a proud replay. This is the Boston College Sports Network from Learfield. This is Karen's experience. I looked at houses for over a year, but only had a weekend to lock in an offer. At Cambridge Savings Bank, we know your home buying experience will be unique, which is why our dedicated mortgage loan experts work closely to understand you on a personal level, giving you the support and confidence to make smart decisions fast, especially on weekends. See how Cambridge Savings Bank can help you get home at cambridgesavings.com. Member FDIC, equal housing lender, NMLS number 543370. Drivers who switch and save with Progressive could save hundreds, which could be life-changing. Life I mean, you could put that money towards concert tickets for your daughter to see that singer who sings about painful breakups. And one song will inspire your little beauty to break up with that beast she's dating, Brian. Instead, she'll date someone who's nice and worthy of her love, not someone who addresses you and your spouse as, bro. And it's all because you could save money switching at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Not available in all states. The ball's inbounded to Mason Madsen. He's going to swing it out to Devin McLaughlin, who fires a three and connects. Devin, from the top of the key, gives Boston College the lead back. 1918 BC, eight and a half left in the first half. Back here on the Village Bank halftime show, Boston College with a 31 30 lead over the Providence College Friars here at the Amica Mutual Pavilion. You just heard a, a big three from Devin McLaughlin. He leads the way for Boston College here in the first half with 11 points and four rebounds. Quinton Post got into early foul trouble, which has been something that's plagued QP from time to time. He's got three fouls. We'll see if he starts the second half here for head coach Earl Grant. But moving on with our halftime highlights, the Eagles trailed 30 to 28 before our man, Devin McLaughlin, ties it up at 30. Ball goes to Madsen, who throws a lob to Devin McLaughlin, who slams it home to tie the game at 30 with one minute left to go here in the first half. The Eagles would get a free throw from Claudel Harris Jr. inside the last 15 seconds for their final point of the half to make it 31 to 30 over the Providence College Friars here. We're going to pause for 10 seconds for station identification. You're listening to Boston College basketball from Learfield. That's going to put the wraps on the Village Bank halftime report here from the Amica Mutual Pavilion. 31-30, to 30, Boston College leads here at halftime. Danier and I will have the second half coming up after this timeout. You're listening to Boston College Basketball from Learfield. And the game goes into overtime. game goes into overtime. The choice to enjoy is easy. Bud Light, easy to drink, easy to enjoy. Order Bud Light online today. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Bud Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Great Hill Dental is the premier dental group in the Boston area. Winners of Boston Magazine Top Dentist five years in a row. The dentists of Great Hill Dental are the best in their field, caring for patients of all ages. Great Hill Dental provides a whole health dentistry approach with all specialists on staff providing coordinated care in one location. Visit Great Hill Dental in Boston, Somerville, Braintree, Peabody, or Chelmsford and schedule an appointment today online at greathilldental.com. Here, the Eagles soar. This is the Boston College Sports Network from Learfield. Guys, we work.
work hard and play even harder. That's why Had Jars believes that you should feel your best all the time. From casual wear to the perfect tailored suit for all the big and tall guys out there. Do yourself a favor and dress like the Eagles do on game day. Get to Had Jars, where they have been delivering confidence to the better than average man for the past 50 years. Visit Had Jars showrooms in Quincy or Burlington or go to big-tall.com for more information. That's big-tall.com. Go BC! eBay Motors is here for the ride. 120,000 miles of night drives, daily commutes, and who knows how many. Are we there yet? Through countless fixes, elbow grease, and a new radiator, you kept your ride alive. With eBay Motors, you have over 122 million parts to keep it running. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, they'll be the perfect fit every time. Plus, at these prices, well, we're burning rubber, not cash. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. This copyrighted broadcast is an exclusive presentation of Learfield under the broadcasting rights granted by Boston College. Reuse of this presentation is prohibited without the expressed written consent of Boston College and Learfield. Announcers are provided by Learfield and approved by Boston College. Ready to start the second half back here in Providence. Boston College holding a 31-30 lead over the Providence College Friars in the first round of the National Invitation Tournament here. Danye, it was an up-and-down first half, a little bit uneven for BC, but all in all, they should be pretty happy, I think, to be up by one point considering Quinton Post exited the game early with three fouls. No, absolutely. I mean, for the Eagles to be up one point with all the trials and tribulations they've gone through in this first half is a tremendous feat. Uh, I mean, right here, these first four minutes, they have to come out with the mentality to try to put Providence away because Providence is just lingering around, but it seems like they, they're waiting for that knockout punch. BC has to deliver that right now. BC will start the second half with the basketball. It will be the original starting five for head coach Earl Grant. Zachary, Waddell Harris Jr., Mason Madsen, Quinton Post with his three fouls, and Devin McLaughlin against Duol, Floyd Jr., Pierre Ticket gains in Oduro. So starting five on starting five. Boston College with the ball first. Quinton Post hands off to Claudel Harris Jr. Gets stuck in the lane. Kicks it back out to McLaughlin. Throws an ill-advised pass into the post. And it gets picked off by Oduro. Turnover number one of the second half for Boston College. As Providence brings it into the front court. Duall takes a dribble handoff from Oduro. Back to Oduro in the deep post. Kicks it out to Gaines. Wide open three. He misses. Another offensive rebound by Pierre. He goes up with a jumper, and he misses. This time rebounded safely by Claudel Harris Jr., who kicks it up to Jaden Zachary. 19-15 to go here in regulation. Another turnover for Boston College. Just super sloppy play as Quinton Post couldn't handle a post-entry pass from Jaden Zachary. Fumbles it. Oduro gets the steal. Kicks it up to Duall. Drives in on Zachary. Kicks it to Gaines, who gets tied up. The ball gets ripped out of there by Duall. Kicks it out to Oduro. Wide open three. He's side rim. So just really ugly basketball, to put it bluntly, here in the first 60 <laughs> seconds of the second half both ways. Yeah, the only thing I can say about that, that was totally weird. Yeah, that looked that, like... That 30 seconds of gameplay was weird. That looked like two teams that probably don't even belong in the NIT here in the first <laughs> 60 seconds of the of the second half. BC will try... We'll, we'll do a do-over here as they bring it in to the forecourt. Madsen gives it to McLaughlin. He goes up strong and gets fouled. So a much better offensive set there for the Eagles, who had two turnovers their first two times down the floor here in the second half. Devin McLaughlin with another strong move. And he goes up and gets fouled by Ticket Gaines, who picks up his third foul here, Donye. So Ticket Gaines with three and Quinton Post with three. Yeah, and Gaines has been guarding everyone. We talked about him numerous times on the defensive end. McLaughlin good on his first free throw. Extends the BC lead 32-30, 18-39 here left in regulation. 12 points now. Leading Boston College for Devin McLaughlin as he bends the knees on the second and swishes it through. So two for two for Devin. 33-30 Boston College, 18-39 left to go in regulation. McLaughlin now a game-high 13 points. Yeah, that's just Dev being Dev, doing what he does with QP out. 
him and MJ keeping the Eagles in the game. All right, see if BC can get a stop here. Oduro in the front court, hands it to Pierre. Wide open three, nobody here, and he switches it. Miscommunication there. Mason Madsen looking at Coach Grant to see who is responsible for that switch, but wide open three. It seems to be kind of the uh, uh, an Achilles heel of BC of, of late perimeter defense. Yeah, you can't leave Pierre that wide open. McLaughlin now on a dribble drive gets cleaned out. Oh my goodness, now they're going to call a foul. Devin McLaughlin, folks, just got cleaned out on a dribble drive. No foul whatsoever. He got knocked to the floor, was laying on the floor, and they're going to call him for a trip as Pierre was trying to come away with that rebound and fell over McLaughlin. Did I describe that right, partner? No, you did, but, but you know what? I'm going to go above. Even though there was contact, Devin has to go through Pierre as a big. So the guard, the ref's not going to reward him for going soft. You got to go through and put him on the ground. All right, DJ. I stand correct. Do all now in the forecourt. Providence hands it out to Oduro behind the back dribble. Drives on post. Slick fadeaway move. Can't get it. Rebound Mason Madsen. 33 to 30. We're deadlocked here. 17.30 to go in regulation. Devin McLaughlin dribbles it into the front court. Hands off to Quadell Harris Jr. Swings it out to the left to Mason Madsen. Post entry to Quinton Post who had Pierre on a switch and Pierre over the back on Quinton Post gets whistled for the foul. Yeah, but right there, they have to have better game recognition. QP, Devin had the ball. QP had him pinned for an easy layup. You know, I, I know they got it down to him and they got a foul, but that was an easy two points. So point you're saying QP. they got to get it to him quicker. Yeah, when they see that recognition with, with, with a small on him, just throw it up. BC, He'll get it. BC inbounding. Jaden Zachary in the quick post. Dribble handoff to Zachary. Drives in the lane. Goes up strong with the right hand floater. Swish. And Jaden Zachary gives the Eagles a 35 33 lead. 17 15 to go in regulation. Right here, Eagles with a little full court press right now. Eagles applying some token pressure. Duall now running the point. Garway Duall for Providence and head coach Kim English barking out instructions as they look to get into their offense. The 12 Eagles on the zone, shot clock. Now I mean, excuse me, Kev. That's okay. I'll take that as a compliment. <laughs> Floyd Jr. drives it into the middle of the floor, kicks it out to Pierre. Pierre in the middle of that zone. Now kicks out. The ticket gains. Contested jump shot at the shot clock. Pattern. Almost went down. Good rebound right there by Devin McLaughlin. Lockton, secures the defensive rebound, his fifth, and another bad pass. This time, Jaden Zachary passes to Devin McLaughlin, who wasn't even looking. It gets picked off by Providence and leads to an uncontested run out by Garway Duell, who ties the game 35 to 35. Another just uncharacteristic turnover for Boston College offensively. So you are right. I haven't seen the Eagles do this in a long time. McLaughlin now, another turnover. Devin McLaughlin gets his pocket picked by Floyd Jr. and then commits a frustration foul to stop a breakaway. And I think what they're going to do, the foul has been called as a trip on Devin McLaughlin. And we're going to get a, a media timeout coming here. Our first media timeout of the second half. But another sloppy turnover for Boston College. That's their sixth turnover if I trust the stats, which is dicey here, partner, as we lost power in the first half. But the sixth turnover in just the second one in a row, the Eagles have had four turnovers, Donye, in the first four minutes of the second half. No, you, you're right, because at halftime, the Eagles only had, I think they had two. two turnovers, yeah. so you are 100% correct. And that's right on cue. Four turnovers in, in less than four minutes. And that's just unacceptable. So a good timeout, uh, you know, the time of the timeout is good for Coach Grant here to rally the troops. 35-35, Boston College and Providence not enough. 16-14 left to go here in regulation. Come on back after this. You're listening to Boston College Basketball from Learfield. Be sure to visit Apex Entertainment in Marlboro, located right off Route 495. Apex is the largest family entertainment center in New England. It has over 100,000 square feet of pure fun. You can enjoy over 30 lanes of bowling, including Candle Pen, a multi-level go-kart track, Apex Kids, sports simulators, bumper cars, laser tag, mini golf, ropes course, and arcade. Also, don't forget about their chef-inspired menu in the Pit Stop Tavern with over 65 gluten-free items. Apex Entertainment, where perfect weather is always guaranteed. Go Eagles! 
Source Promo is the best choice for your company's branded promotional products and wearable needs. Source Promo works with you like an agency would and provides better service and pricing than the mega promo places you see on TV. When your brand or business needs help finding just the right thing for your promotional activation, sponsorship, staff engagement, or customer appreciation event, go to SourcePromo.com to get the conversation started. Source Promo is proud to be a partner of Boston College Athletics. Go Eagles! This is Tom's experience. I was completely committed to buying a house. I just wasn't sure I could pull off a huge down payment. At Cambridge Savings Bank, we know that your home buying experience will be unique. That's why our dedicated mortgage loan experts share your commitment, taking the time to truly understand your individual needs and working with you to find solutions that set you up for success. See how Cambridge Savings Bank can help you get home at CambridgeSavings.com. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender, NMLS number 543370. BC Basketball is brought to you by Legal Seafoods. Check out one of their 20 area locations or go to LegalSeafoods.com for more information. Now offering catering and takeout. If it isn't fresh, it isn't legal. Boston College 35, Providence College 35, 1614 left to go here in regulation in the first round of the NIT from Providence, Rhode Island. And Dan Danier, the big development here, that frustration foul from Devin McLaughlin. He now has three fouls along with Quinton Post. Both of them are remaining on the floor here for Coach Earl Grant. Yeah, I mean, right now it's, you know, it's go time. I mean, it's the NIT, you know, 16 minutes ago in the second half. You, know, you, you got to let them go play through it right now. If, if Devin fouls out, you got strong. You know, I, I, but I probably would get one of them out, not both of them in right now. Duel, Pierre, Oduro, Floyd Jr., and Ticket Gaines. The starting five versus starting five still as we dip under 16 minutes to go here from the Amica Mutual Pavilion. All knotted up at 35. Garway Duel out front, passes it to Floyd Jr., pulls up for three on Devin McLaughlin. It's no good. Ball is going to go off the side rim, out of bounds to Boston College. Now, one thing I want to mention as well here, partner, is the NIT is trying out some new timing formats. You might notice we took that media timeout north of 16 on the timer. They're going to try five media timeouts at under 17, 14, 11, 8, and 4 here in the NIT. And they're tinkering with some new ideas here. New media timeouts for the second half only, as well as a wider paint area, a wider lane. So some, some interesting things here that, that the NCAA is trying out here in the NIT. Claudel Harris Jr. on the baseline, pulls up for a jumper, no good. Floyd Jr. with the rebound, he pushes hard. Gaines now with the ball up on the left wing, guarded by Prince Elite Bay, who just checked in at the last media timeout. Gaines hands off to Floyd Jr. Floyd Jr. driving on Prince Elite Bay, kicks it out, and Gaines is going to pick this ball up, and it's going to be a backcourt violation, a turnover for Providence as he picked the ball up, which was smart in that situation because Mason Madsen, if he got to that ball first, would have had an uncontested layup. Yeah, no, he had to pick that up, Gaines, because if not, Madsen was on his tail, would have scooped it up and scored. And, and obviously, you want to stop the ball a little higher, but they didn't, so now the Eagles have the ball baseline out. So the Eagles will inbound here. Jaden Zachary into Quinton Post. Post now on the right corner. Faces up on Oduro. He's going to go into a post move here. Backing down Oduro. Gets it poked away. Secures the ball again. Quick fadeaway jumper over Oduro is good. Good job by Quinton Post right there. Got it poked away slightly but didn't turn it over. And hit the jump jumper over Oduro. Boston College 37. Providence 35. Yeah, that was great patience right there by QP. Absorbing the contact but staying true to his move and scoring easily. Floyd Jr. now into the front court for Providence. Dribble handoff to Duel. Duel working on the left wing gets Quinton Post as he ducks into Oduro. Duel with a good feed. He got Post to switch out on him. And as soon as that happened and QP switched out onto Duel, Oduro dove to the basket and drew a foul. It's going to be a two-shot foul. The third foul of the half on the Eagles, it's Mason Mattinson's second foul. And Oduro right there, good job on the screen roll. Got the smaller man on him and dove right to the basket. Yeah, he's like a throwback. I love his game. It's setting hard screens and rolling. He's making the guards play defense and then the bigs hedge out. Yeah, Providence head basketball coach Kim English had Oduro at George Mason previously. Oduro played at George Mason for four years before 
transferring this past offseason to Providence in, in Coach English refers to him exactly as you mentioned, Daniel, an old school big man. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I love his game just for the opposing team, you know, a game recognizing game. Yeah, I tip my cap to him. Oduro perfect from the charity stripe, two of two, ties this game 37 37 as we dip under 14 40 to go here in regulation. Boston College into the front court. Mason Madsen on the dribble drive has Oduro on him, falls over, he travels. There was a little bit of minimal contact there from Oduro, but Mason just kind of flopped over, and the second he went to the floor, he's going to draw the travel call. Another turnover, the seventh of the game for Boston College. Yeah, right there, Mason has the advantage on Oduro. Sometimes you just got to be a little more patient. Take your time, move the ball back and forth, and then attack. When, you, when, when the whole team knows you have a mismatch, that's when the defense is set. So that was hard to attack right there. Tied up at 37. Providence now with a chance to take the lead. Floyd Jr. on the right, guarded by Madsen. Passes it out front to Pierre. Pierre to Duel. Duel inside to Floyd, who's got his back to the basket against Mason Madsen. Floyd trying to back him in. You're going to get another foul call on Mason Madsen. Man, just minimal contact. Two guys of equal size just kind of belly bumping in the post. And if, you know, this is a, I'll say a Big East style game, I mean, that's that's a no call. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how that's a foul. Like, when they get the two times and Dev took a charge, they call the block. And right there, Madsen just walled up. He stopped and called the foul. That's already four fouls in the half on Boston College. That's Mason's third foul. So, going to keep an eye on that. Oduro into the post. Kicks it out to Duel. Duel guarded by Waddell Harris Jr. Dribbles between the legs. Pulls it back out to Pierre. They're going to go back into the post to Oduro, guarded by Quinton Post. Doubled by Zachary. Kicks back out for a three to Pierre. And wide open, and he drills it. Jaden Zachary helped on Oduro. Tried to lend a hand in there to QP. Left and wide open. Another wide open three. Providence leads 40-37. Yeah, that was a tough shot right there by Pierre. Good defense, but sometimes just better offense wins. Zachary dribbling out between the rings, kicks it out to Quinton Post. Passes over in the corner to Claudel Harris Jr., who answers with a three of his own. Big three right there for MJ. 40-40, to 40, 13-20 left to go here in the second half. Yeah, right there. Big three right there by MJ in the corner. Shot clock running down, QP finding them. With his feet are set, he's one of the best shooters. Providence in a 40-40 game. Pierre dribbling right down, gets called, gets another nickel-dime foul. This time it's going to be on Prince Alique on a little ticky-tack check, hand-check foul. That's going to be the Eagles' fifth foul already of the second half, and we haven't even played six minutes. So the bonus is a coming for Providence. And that's going to bring us to our new under-14 timeout here in the NIT with Boston College and Providence tied up at 40. Back after this from the Amica Mutual Pavilion in the first round of the National Invitation Tournament, you're listening to Boston College Basketball from Learfield. Whether you're playing for fun or playing for keeps at the Massachusetts State Lottery, it means so much more than just money for you because we've been giving back since 72. Your wallet explodes while we're plowing the roads and we're building schools while you're buying a pool. So try your lucky numbers you can see for yourself. Everyone's a winner in the Commonwealth. Everyone's a winner in the Commonwealth. the ACC to the bean pot. This is the Boston College Sports Network from Learfield. Life is full of choices. How to manage your time, your energy, and even your money. But what if you were given the chance to stop and get rewarded for the way you want to bank? That's the power of Evolve Rewards Checking from the Village Bank. Rewarding banking for the way you choose to live. Visit village-bank.com and evolve today. The Village Bank. Member FDIC. Member DIF. College sports fans now have access to hundreds of weekly podcasts that zero in on the college sports world. Now available in the Varsity Podcast Network and part of the new Varsity app. The app is free and available from wherever you get your favorite apps. Download the Varsity app today to have access to hundreds of national podcasts as well as your favorite team-focused podcasts. 
The Varsity Podcast Network, now available for free on the Varsity app. Download from the App Store and listen today. It's a new season at Kohl's with everyday styles at great prices. You can get more of what you want for less. Find go-tos for going everywhere and perfect picks for your home. Shop Kohl's and Kohl's.com today. Eagles fans, next time you're in the mood for chef-inspired dishes, signature cocktails, and a wide selection of local craft beers, look no further than Blues on Highland in Needham Heights. Your favorite food is just a click away. Visit blueonhighland.com. That's blueonhighland, all one word, dot com to make your reservation today. And I know, Danier, you and the missus have visited Blues on Highland. Absolutely. The food is tremendous. Great ambiance. Great atmosphere. Close to BC's uh, campus. And the babitas are delicious. The babitas. <laughs> is it las babitas or el babitas? It's a, well, you You're going to teach me the Spanish. Los babitas. Los babitas. But, but that means the drinks were delicious. Boston College 40, Providence College 40. We're knotted up here, 40 apiece, 13-10, left to go in regulation of round one of the National Invitation Tournament here from Providence, Rhode Island. And Boston College in a little bit of foul trouble here. Danier, they've got three players with three fouls. Quinton Post, Devin McLaughlin, and now Mason Madsen, the latest as Providence looks for a lead. Providence is going to inbound in the forecourt here. Ticket gains hands to Garway Duel. Duel dribbling between his legs, guarded by Quadel Harris Jr. Swings it over to the point guard, Pierre. Guarded by Jaden Zachary. Ten on the shot clock. Pierre drives, gets shut down by Clinton Post. Pierre still driving, trying to work on the larger man Post. and goes up and under with a beautiful move, taking advantage of the quickness mismatch. It gives Providence a 42-40 lead, 12.45 left in the game. Yeah, that was a great move right there by Pierre, being patient. Had the mismatch, like I said, with the Eagles. That time he took his time, didn't try the first time, scored on the second. BC now down two. Waddell Harris Jr. out to Quinton Post. Oduro shuts him down. Post on the dribble. Luke picks up his dribble now. He's looking for a teammate. Gives it to Donald Hand Jr. Gets a lot of contact. No call. Post picks up the loose change and lays it in. Good job there by Quinton Post. Staying alive to a loose ball. He picked up the loose change from Donald Hand Jr. and laid it in. Tying the game at 42-42. Yeah, that was a great uh, drive right there by QP securing the loose ball and being patient, going up and under, using the rim as a protection. 42 apiece here. Gaines now working on Donald Hand Jr. And Donald Hand Jr. picks up another foul for Boston College. That is their sixth foul already here in the second half, the last non-shooting foul. So for 12 minutes now, the 12 minutes remaining in regulation, Providence College will be shooting free throws the rest of the way. Well, let's hope it'll be like UVA. They don't call any more fouls. From them. <laughs> yeah. Six fouls on Boston College this half, two on Providence. I'll let you do the math. Oduro now gets the inbounds pass. He's at the top of the key, guarded by Quinton Post. Spins. Beautiful move up and under on Oduro. He rolled right off Quinton Post. Up off the glass for an easy layup. 44-42 Providence. 11.40 to go here in regulation. Yeah, that was a, a good move. Q3 played great defense, but... Oduro just using the spinning moves with the three fouls. QP's not able to do what he wants to. Hand Jr. now trying to answer for BC. Pulls up and back rims a jumper. Rebound by Pierre for Providence. He's on the attack. Gives it to Oduro. Flying in. Gets a shot contested without fouling by QP. Great job there by Post. Jaden Zachary now for the Eagles. Picks up the rebound and he's into the front court. Working on Oduro. Down to Prince Bay, who leaves a shot about four feet short. He's about a six-foot shot, and he shot it about two feet. Floyd Jr. with the rebound. Now into the front court. Pulls up on the left-hand left hand side of the court for three. No good. Back rim. Quinton Post with the rebound, and the Eagles will slow it down. Partner, I love that description. That was pretty awesome. Post with the rebound into the front court for Jaden Zachary, who gets a hand check foul. Finally, a foul on Providence. We haven't had one in quite a while. It's going to be the point guard, Pierre, with the hand check on Jaden Zachary. The third foul of the half on Providence, and that's going to bring us to our under-11 media timeout. Again, the new NIT rules with the media timeout every three minutes here in the second half. The NCAA trying out a new timeout structure. So... 
Providence College 44, Boston College 42, 1044 left to go here in regulation. Come on back to Providence after this. You're listening to Boston College Basketball from Learfield. Boston College 1992 alum Matt McGovern is the proud owner of the McGovern Auto Group, Boston's fastest growing family of car dealerships. Matt is proud to serve BC, its students, alumni, and their families with 22 dealerships across the Boston Metro and over 5,000 vehicles to choose from. Don't settle for a new vehicle from just anyone. Join your fellow Eagles Matt McGovern, Mark Walker, and Tom Kilgariff at McGovern Auto Group. Visit them online at McGovernAuto.com. Go Eagles! Hey Eagles fans, next time you're looking for modern American cuisine in a contemporary urban chic setting, look no further than Blue on Highland in Needham Heights. Proud supporters of Boston College Athletics, Blue on Highland encourages you to visit and experience our amazing selection of signature cocktails, local craft beers, and fine wines. Whether it's power lunching, socializing after work over dinner and drinks, or celebrating special occasions while enjoying chef-inspired dishes, we'll be ready for you. Visit blueonhighland.com today to make your reservations. Go Eagles! into overtime. The choice to enjoy is easy. Bud Light. Easy to drink. Easy to enjoy. Order Bud Light online today. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Bud Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Fans, for every three-pointer the Eagles make this season, Cambridge Savings Bank will donate $10 to the John M. Barry Boys and Girls Club of Newton. Thank you to Cambridge Savings Bank for giving back to our local community. Cambridge Savings Bank, always you. And a quick look at the stats here tonight. Partner, the Eagles have made three three-point shots. They're three of nine from downtown. That's another $30 to the John M. Barry Boys and Girls Club, and I have a feeling they're going to need at least three or four more of those to get out of Providence College here tonight with a win. Providence College themselves 5 of 20 from long distance. So neither team lighting it up from long range here, partner, but I think the Eagles are going to need to make a couple more to get out of here with a victory. No, they absolutely are, well, you know, but it, right now the Eagles are down 44-42. They just have to figure out the last part of what how physical the game's being called. So right now they they're only down two, but if they stick to their game plan, start knocking down some shots, you know, not like the last one that Prince had, but they have open shots. I like where they are on the road down two with 10:44 to go. Any coach in America would take this. So Boston College, as we mentioned, going into that last media timeout, already 16 fouls, something to monitor here, the last 1044. We'll see how good Providence is from the charity stripe and how many opportunities they get there. Providence 5 of 5 tonight from the line, the Eagles 5 of 6. Eagles will inbound here to our right. Jaden Zachary under his own basket, under his offensive basket, excuse me, inbounds to Prince Alibe. On the right wing, he is guarded by Ticket Gaines. He's going to swing it back out to Claudel Harris Jr., who's guarded by the point guard Pierre. Armani Mighty on the floor now for Quinton Post, sets a screen. Claudel Harris Jr. to the elbow, pulls up, back rims a shot. Good look there for Claudel, just could knock it down from about 15 feet. Providence clears the rebound to Duel. He's going to walk it up slow. They're going to slow the pace down here, are the Friars, as we approach the 10-minute mark, the halfway point of the second half. Providence holding a two-point lead. Floyd Jr., guarded by Donald Hand Jr. Two juniors doing battle there as he kicks it out to Pierre. For a three, back rim, no good. Rebound to Prince of League Bay. Secures the rebound, gives it to the point guard, Jaden Zachary, who's going to bring it over the timeline. Zachary swings it to Elite Bay. Elite Bay now backing down ticket gains on the left block. Spins to the paint, decides against a shot. Kicks it out to Donald Ham Jr. Back to Zachary. 12 on the shot clock now. Gives it to Armani Mighty, the top of the key. Eight now on the timer. Seven on the timer. Dribble handoff to Zachary, who attacks, pulls up for a jumper. Short. Armani Mighty with a great offensive rebound. 
and draws a foul, a shove on the big man for Providence, Castro, who's in to give Oduro a break. And just like that, Oduro is going to check right back in for Castro after that foul. Yeah, right there, Mighty did a great job first on the defensive end of the Eagles. And on this side, a tremendous job going for the offensive rebound, giving the Eagles a second chance opportunity. Yeah, we'll see how long Coach Grant leaves QP on the bench here. 9.34 left to go in regulation. Prince Elite Bay now for Boston College on the right wing. Gives it to Armani Mighty, top of the key. Mighty picks up his dribble. Dribble hand off. Jane Zachary is going to get a call against him here. Floyd Jr. with a nickel dimer. So a, a couple fouls now going Boston College's way. And maybe credit Coach Grant and the BC staff for getting into the officials a little bit during that last media timeout. Now two fouls on Providence, this possession. Yeah, and right here, Providence is playing so aggressive on the dribble handoffs. The back door is wide open. They need to set that up. Back door, and they will score easy. Five fouls now on Providence, six on Boston College in the second half. The Eagles still on offense with their third try of this possession. Waddell Harris Jr. at the top of the key, dribbles to the elbow, pulls up, tough shot, back rim. Another good-looking shot there by Claudel, just not going down. Pierre now on the attack. Wow. What a tough call right there. Pierre goes down hard. It's going to be Claudel Harris Jr. who's called for the foul. It's going to be at least a one-and-one, one, if not two shots now. But Claudel turned his back to Pierre. He had his back to the offensive player and is running yeah. away from him with his hands up. <laughs> that's brutal right so, there. I mean, that's a pretty tough call. Yeah, Pierre turned his ankle and went down. That's when the ref called the foul. But you are 100% correct. MJ got out of the way, didn't even touch him right there looking at the replay. So Claudel Harris Jr. just did a flyby with his hands straight up in the air and was running away from the offensive player, Pierre, who barged into his back as Claudel Harris Jr. was facing out of bounds. And somehow that's a foul on Claudel Harris Jr., which is going to give Pierre a one and one here with 9.06 to go in regulation. And free throws are going to be part of the story here. Pierre bends the knees, he misses, and the ball does not lie, partner, as Pierre misses from the charity stripe. Donald Hand Jr. with the rebound for BC, gives off to Jaden Zachary. Eagles looking to attack and try to tie this game up or take a lead with a three. 44-42 Providence as we dip under nine minutes to go here in regulation. Jaden Zachary swings it over to quit the post back in the game for Armani Mighty. QP with a shot fake working on Oduro, now backing him down. Bullying and taking a ton of body contact. Left-handed jump hook after he, quite frankly, got mugged with the body on the right block. And QP still scores, tying the game up 44-44, 8.30 to go. Yeah, and one thing, be, be conscious of Pierre. His ankle's not right. Look at him. He's laboring. I think they need to attack him. Providence with the ball in a tie game. Oduro trying to back down Quinton Post, decides against it, kicks it out to Pierre. Pierre drives on Jaden Zachary, kicks back out to Floyd. Floyd's driving on Mason Madsen, and he gets erased by Devin McLaughlin. Get that up out of here, says Devin, and Donald Hand Jr. comes away with it. Hands to Quinton Post, who drives right at Oduro to the rim. Can't get a short shot to go. No foul called. QP wanted a foul there on Oduro. Certainly a ton of contact. They're letting him play as Providence now with the ball back with Pierre. 44-44, 7.45 to go now. Yeah, there's a lot of contact, but the refs are letting him play through it. Yeah, that's that's definitely going to be a foul. You're hoping that's on Donald Hand Jr. here for a reach-in. That's what you're hoping. So Post is having words with the officials here, and Jaden Zachary smartly now I have, I have no idea why that's a foul on Quentin Post that foul was clear as day on Donald Hand Jr. reaching in I have no idea why they would call Quentin Post other than you know they're trying to get Quentin Post put on the bench that's the only logical reason that was a foul on Donald Hand Jr. 10 times out of 10 yeah the foul before was on Donald Hand Jr. they didn't call it QP body checked him, and they got him on the second one. So Donald Hand Jr. reaches in to give the foul, then raises his hand to take the foul. They do not charge it to Donald Hand, and now that is Quinton Post's fourth foul. Four fouls for QP, 741 left to go in regulation. It's going to be a one-and-one one for Providence coming out of this timeout. Boston College 44, Providence 44, 741 left to go here at the Amp. Come on back after this. You're listening to Boston College Basketball from Learfield.
State Electric's commitment to client satisfaction and excellence drives them to deliver best-in-class electrical contracting services on time and on budget. With more than 30 years' experience executing the most challenging and complex commercial, utility power, rail transit, and low-voltage systems projects throughout the Boston area, State Electric gives their clients the peace of mind that they will deliver proven experience and powerful performance on every job. Let's go Eagles and light up the competition. The maroon and gold live here. This is the Boston College Sports Network from Learfield. Whether you're playing for fun or playing for keeps at the Massachusetts State Lottery, it means so much more than just money for you because we've been giving back since 72. Your wallet explodes while we're plowing the roads and we're building schools while you're buying a pool. So try your lucky numbers you can see for yourself. Everyone's a winner in the Commonwealth. Everyone's a winner in the Commonwealth. This is Karen's experience. I looked at houses for over a year, but only had a weekend to lock in an offer. At Cambridge Savings Bank, we know your home buying experience will be unique, which is why our dedicated mortgage loan experts work closely to understand you on a personal level, giving you the support and confidence to make smart decisions fast, especially on weekends. See how Cambridge Savings Bank can help you get home at cambridgesavings.com. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender, NMLS number 543370. BC and the Massachusetts State Lottery have teamed up to introduce Hometown Heroes. The program celebrates deserving individuals who have made a positive impact on their communities. Honorees will be recognized during select BC athletic events throughout the year. To nominate your Hometown Hero, please visit bit.ly slash hero. The Massachusetts State Lottery, $32 billion to communities since 1972. Kevin Collins and Danye Abrams back with you from Providence, Rhode Island in the Amica Mutual Pavilion in the first round of the National Invitation Tournament between Boston College and Providence College. We're deadlocked at 44. 741 left to go in regulation. The, the news of the moment here, Quinton Post now with four fouls, picking up his fourth foul just before that last media timeout. And now Providence College is going to head to the line for a one and one. That is eight fouls in the half on Boston College. Five for Providence College. And Ticket Gaines is going to be going to the line here for an all-important one-and-one, one, partner. Yeah, no, that, that's that's a great call. But here's one to watch. Pierre, their point guard. Remember that said he turned his ankle? He has 18 points. He's hobbling. The trainer was just working on him. Let's see if he comes back. Gaines makes the first free throw, giving Providence a 45-44 lead. Second to come here. Is Providence in the bonus early. Second free throw up and good, giving the Providence Friars a 46-44 lead, a two-point lead here with seven minutes and 40 seconds to go in regulation, and the crowd is starting to feel engaged here. The Eagles have let Providence hang around. McLaughlin hands off to Madsen. Madsen in the paint, guarded by Duell. Over to Elijah Strong, who's now in the game for Quinton Post. Jaden Zachary probes the paint, can't find anybody, kicks it out to McLaughlin, open for three, front rim. Devin fights for a loose ball and knocks it out of Oduro's hand on the rebound to Madsen, who's now going to drive in and get a layup off the top of the window. Great layup by Mason Madsen off the very top of the glass, tying the game 46-46 with seven minutes to go. Yeah, tremendous move right there by Madsen, but how about Devin doing Dev things? Oduro had that rebound. Dev came out of nowhere and tipped it out of his hands. Gains now for Providence, guarded by Donald Hen Jr. Elijah Strong now guarding Castro. Jaden Zachary goes under the screen. Strong guarding Castro. Floyd Jr. now dribbles what looked like out of bounds. They're saying Boston College hit it. They're going to give it back to Providence College. We'll see who deflected that, but there's five on the shot timer. 6.42 left on the, on the game clock. The yeah, coach is employing his team. There's five seconds. Switch everything. Stay connected. Gaines catches the ball on the inbounds pass. Rims out of three. Rebound by Mason Madsen. He's done a great job helping out on the glass, especially the defensive glass for the Eagles. Brings it up to Elijah Strong, who's working on Castro. Down on the block. Strong goes strong to the basket. 
and he shoots the ball off the side of the basket but gets a foul called on Castro, the big man for Providence. He's in the game with Oduro trying to give Providence some size advantage here. He's seldom used is Castro, but he gets a foul on the seldom used Strong, who's going to go to the, the line. They're going to give him two shots, Donya, even though the, the ball hit the side of the backboard. All I can say is that at least they're consistent. Yeah, coming into today's game, Castro has started one game only playing, averaging nine minutes a game. Strong now to the charity stripe. Front rim's the first one. It's definitely not a position Elijah is used to being in here. But he did get some run during the ACC tournament with foul trouble. And Strong short on the first free throw. That's the sixth team foul in the half on Providence. He's eyeing the second one. The crowd getting involved. The students behind the basket. Strong bends the knees. And he calmly sinks to second. So good for you, Elijah. Giving the Eagles a one-point lead. Boston College 47. Providence College 46. 6.20 left here in the second half as Providence looks to take the lead back. The Friars enter the front court here, led by Ticket Gaines. He's got Mason Manson on him, and he's dribbling right on top of the Friar logo at center court. He swings it over to Floyd Jr., who's guarded by Donald Han Jr. Floyd Jr. goes to the basket, spins, shut off, stolen by Devin McLaughlin. Great double team there on Floyd Jr. by Devin. The Eagles come back to the front court. Jaden Zachary swings it over to Mason Madsen. To Mason with a step back jumper, no good. Loose ball, chased down by Devin McLaughlin, and he saves it to Jaden Zachary, who's got a new 20 second shot clock for Boston College. Jaden with dual on him, sheds dual, dribbles to the foul line, pulls up, air ball. There might have been some contact there, not called. Providence coming down the other end, and you're going to get a foul. I think that's going to be on Devin McLaughlin. It looks like ball up top, but they're going to call Devin with the body. And it's going to be dual, I believe, that's going to be shooting two shots here. The Eagles now regardless in the double bonus the rest of the way uh, with nine fouls here in the second half. Yeah, looking at the replay going slow. Looked like it was a clean block up top, but they're saying he got body down low. So I believe they gave that to Jaden Zachary, which is a break because it looked like it was Devin McLaughlin. So they're somehow calling Zachary down low because it was all ball. Now they're going to switch the foul yeah. to Devin McLaughlin. So I was say, Zachary was on the floor. He missed the shot. Yeah, the officials now have switched the foul to Devin McLaughlin, which makes it his fourth foul, which is a big deal. As Duell now makes the first free throw, he's got another one coming up, 47-47. We're deadlocked again, 534 left here in regulation. Providence College has not made a basket, Donye, in six minutes. So all these points they're getting are from the foul line. It is. I mean, the Eagles stepped up their defense and have uh, been playing tremendous. Yeah. Duell, Duell makes the second, gives Providence the lead once again. 48-47 Friars, 5.30 to go in regulation, and the crowd is coming to life. They are definitely a factor here at the Ant tonight. Harris Jr. brings the ball over. Half court for the Eagles. Strong now with the basket to Madsen. Madsen spins, goes to the baseline, gets it poked away, and it's stolen by Duell. But that should be Boston College basketball. Duell poked it back out of bounds. Madsen fortunate there that it didn't lead to a turnover, but Duell kicked it out of bounds right in front of us. Yeah, I was going to say, if they call that one different, I might have taken my headset off and ran out there. But I'm glad they spoke and get it together. Got the right call. And Jr. inbounding right in front of us. 20 on the shot clock. Inbounds it to Quadell Harris Jr. He's guarded by Floyd Jr. Battle of the Juniors as it's been all night. Waddell drives to the basket, gets contact. And I think that's going to be on Oduro with the, the body bump there. Yes, it is. It's going to be Josh Oduro with the foul on Caudell Harris Jr. as he went up. The shot was an air ball, but there was a lot of chest-to-chest -chest contact there by Oduro. And Caudell has earned himself a, a hard-earned trip to the line. Yeah, it was. Just like the last call with Devin, a lot of body down low. Might have got it up top, but you can't run into the, 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 the offensive player like that. Got to give him landing space. That's the seventh foul on the Friars this half. So the Eagles will be in the one and one the rest of the way, but Quadell will have two shots here into the Providence student section, and he calmly makes the first one, tying the game 48-48. Five minutes and one second left to go here in regulation. That's now 12 points 
on the night for Claudel. He's the second leading scorer on the floor behind Devin McLaughlin with 13. I mean, would you expect anything less? Two rival teams. Oh, Claudel no good on the second. He rims it out. These are big down the stretch. Boston College now 8 of 10 from the line. Providence 9 of 10. That's going to be a big part of the story in the last five minutes as Garway Duel brings it over half court in the tie game. He swings it to Oduro. He lobs it back door for Castro, and he dunks it on the alley-oop. So found money right there for Castro, for head coach Kim English. Castro only averaging 2.8 points per game coming into this one, giving Providence a 50-48 to 48 lead. BC now back on offense. Strong pulls up for three, and he nails it. Ice in his veins for Elijah Strong, giving Boston College a 51-50 lead with 4.15 left in regulation. Eliza Strong, where have you been all my life? That's a big shot for the freshman. Oduro now back for Providence, gives it to Floyd Jr. He's now manned up by Mason Madsen. Floyd Jr. dribbling on the right wing. Ten on the shot clock timer. Not much going here for Providence. Floyd Jr. takes it himself, spins, and can't get it to go on a layup. And we're going to get a loose ball foul here, I believe, going against Providence. And it's going to bring us to our under four media timeout. I think the foul is going to go on Garway Duel. And that is going to be Providence College's eighth team foul of the half. So it's going to lead to a one and one for Boston College. I couldn't tell Danye, Danye who was fouled on that. Could you? Was it Elijah Strong? No, I think it, it was either MJ or, or Han Jr. But that was a good call right there. I, I don't know. There was so much commotion going on. I was so happy for Strong. I lacked my job and found out who the foul was. No, on. we have, uh, where we're seated here, uh, BC head coach Earl Grant is right in front of our field of view and unfortunately obstructed our view on that one. But all you need to know, it's a foul on Providence. It's on duel. It's going to be the eighth team foul on Providence, which will give BC a one and one for a shooter that's too deep to be determined when we come out of this under four media timeout. Boston College 51. Providence College 50. Buckle up. It's going to be a bumpy ride to the finish here in the first round of the NIT. Come on back after this. You're listening to Boston College Basketball from Learfield. Be sure to visit Apex Entertainment in Marlboro, located right off Route 495. Apex is the largest family entertainment center in New England. It has over 100,000 square feet of pure fun. You can enjoy over 30 lanes of bowling, including Candle Pen, a multi-level go-kart track, Apex Kids, sports simulators, bumper cars, laser tag, mini golf, ropes course, and arcade. Also, don't forget about their chef-inspired menu in the Pit Stop Tavern with over 65 gluten-free items. Apex Entertainment, where perfect weather is always guaranteed. Go Eagles! Mass General Brigham Sports Medicine. Personalized sports medicine care driven by research and determination. Top specialists who understand your athletic dreams, goals, and the need to get back to them. Together, we'll write your comeback story. Mass General Brigham Sports Medicine. Call 877-SPORT-01 to start your comeback story today. Hey there, basketball fans. Looking for the ultimate stay to match your game day excitement? Look no further than the Hilton Garden Inn right here in the heart of Brookline. Whether you're cheering for the home team or visiting from out of town, Hilton Garden Inn offers you the perfect slam dunk of comfort and convenience. Spacious rooms, modern amenities, and a location that's a stone's throw away from the action at Boston College basketball games. Make the most of your Boston basketball experience with the Hilton Garden Inn Brookline. Visit bostonbrookline.hgi.com to book your stay today and get ready to elevate your game day. Friends of the Heights is the NIL collective supporting BC student athletes with name, image, and likeness opportunities. Become a member and get autographed swag, access to exclusive events, and more. Visit friendsoftheheights.com today, become a member, or make a donation. And we encourage you to reach out to our main man, Tom Devitt, over at the Friends of the Heights. If you are able to, support Boston College Athletics as they head out into this new world of NIL. But more importantly, the matter at hand right now, Boston College 51, Providence College 50, 355 left in regulation, and Elijah Strong is going to be the shooter for Boston College here, shooting the front end of an all-important one-and-one coming out of this timeout. Quinton Post remains on the bench with four fouls, only 355 left in regulation. Mason Madsen, Claudel Harris Jr., Elijah Strong, Donald Han Jr., and Devin McLaughlin. The 
five Eagles on the floor. Elijah Strong shooting into the Providence College student section here. Bends the knees and swishes calmly the front end of the one and one, making it 52-50. Boston College with 3.55 left. I got to tell you, Elijah Strong is very composed right now. As a freshman learning, he's watched, did his time on the bench, playing behind QP and Mighty, and now with them in foul trouble, he stepped up and made a big shot, made the first free throw, and just calmly switches to second. Both nothing but net. Neither one hit the rim. Two all-important free throws. 53-50, Boston College. Earl Grant leaving Quinton Post on the bench. He's going with the five he's got out there. It's going to be Mason Madsen, Claudel Harris Jr., Donald Han Jr., Elijah Strong, Devin McLaughlin. We've got Floyd Jr., Oduro, Ticket Gaines, Garway Duel, and Pierre, the point guard, who catches the inbounds pass. It's crunch time here in Providence. Great old Big East rivalry here coming down to the wires. Providence brings it into the front court. Floyd Jr. with a pull-up. It's no good. But Oduro, another offensive rebound for Providence. He spins on Devin McLaughlin, goes up strong, and floats it in. Those are tough, Don Danier. Back-breaking baskets, second-chance baskets, and it brings Providence within one. 53-52, 3.25 left. Yeah, and that offensive rebound by Oduro right there just shows why he's so valuable to this team. BC back on offense. Gladell Harris Jr. off the dribble. Gets into the paint. Tough fade away. And he rolls around the rim and in. I thought it was going to be short, but he got the friendly hop off the backboard and in. 55-52 Boston College. Three minutes left. Wow, this three-point lead seems like it's a ten-point lead this whole game. Such a battle. Pierre now for Providence. Gives it to Oduro. He's working against Devin McLaughlin. They double Oduro. Back out to Pierre. Elijah Strong now on Floyd Jr. Ten on the shot clock timer. Under three in the game. Pierre now with the basketball. Swings it over to Floyd Jr. Cam Jr. flies by. Floyd Jr. dribbles out. Kicks it out to Pierre. Four or three. And it's, oh, it's nothing but net. And a timeout. For Kim English, he called it almost like the second that ball went through the net. He knew it was going in. The whistle came so fast, but it was nothing but net for Pierre. And it ties the game 55-55, 2.37 left in regulation. It's going to be a mini 30-second timeout here for Providence. Yeah, you got to give Pierre credit. He just checked in. You can see his ankles bothering him. He's laboring. And for him to step up and make that big three is tremendous. He has been the player of the game, as you mentioned, Danier, for Providence. He's 5 of 9 shooting the three tonight. He's been the only guy with some touch. Providence has six made three-pointers, one by Floyd, five by Pierre. He now has a game-high 21 points leading Providence College. He's 8 of 14 overall from the field. So he's been the player of the night for both sides, outscoring everybody on the floor. No, he's been tremendous. Like you said, he knew that Carter was out. A lot more shots are going to him. And now he's basically stepped up and made it. Like you said, 5 for 9, having a tremendous evening here in the um, Pavilion. And to give you an idea of how much Pierre has stepped up, he's averaging 9.1 points per game this year. Is the sophomore guard out of Elizabeth, New Jersey. 9.1 points per game. And he's dropped 21 on the Eagles tonight here in the first round of the NIT. But it's not over yet. We've got 2.37 left to go. BC will have a full 30-second shot clock. And that timeout by Kim English allows Earl Grant to get Quinton Post back in the game. It's going to be Elijah Strong, Claude L. Harris Jr., Quinton Post, Mason Madsen, and Jaden Zachary in the lineup for BC as Elijah Strong inbounds to Jaden Zachary. And we are off and running in the last two and a half minutes of regulation. Jaden Zachary dribbles over the timeline, sheds his man, dribbles into the paint, picks up his dribble, hands out to Claude L. Harris Jr., they're trying to get the ball to Quinton Post in the paint. They can't get it to him. Elijah Strong now on the wing. Goes up strong through a ton of contact and makes an impossible layup off the window through a ton of contact, giving BC a 57-55 lead with 2.10 left. What a drive. That should have been a foul. A lot of body right there. Providence now back on the attack. Floyd Jr. now with Clyde L. Harris Jr. He's going to post up Oduro on Quinton Post. Oduro banging Post with a fadeaway jump shot. It's an air ball. And it's rebound by Mason Madsen. So good job by Quinton Post playing good, solid defense without fouling there. That was a great defense right there by QP. Buying his time on the bench, great defense. Waddell Harris Jr. into the front court. Kicks out. Elijah Strong, 4-3, no good. 
heat check there for Elijah Strong as Providence clears the rebound through Garway Duel and he brings it back. Providence with a chance to tie or take the lead with a three on this possession. 57-55. And Kim English is going to call another timeout as that possession seemed bogged down. Garway Duel was just kind of pounding the rock into the floor out of the Providence College logo. And first year head coach Kim English calls timeout with 19 on the shot clock. 124 on the game clock, and Boston College clinging to a 57-55 lead. Yeah, and Coach English called that timeout to get Pierre back in the game. When Pierre scored that last three, he is their only offense on the uh, Providence side. Right there, he called the timeout, checked Pierre in right away. Um, but on the defensive end, Pierre's a liability because that ankle is hurting. But I guess when he has a ball in his hand, as a, as a true athlete, you don't feel any pain when you're dribbling the ball. And don't look now, but that strong take from Elijah Strong, he's now got 10 points for Boston College. I know he just missed a three. It was it was a wide open three to his credit. He felt like it was a good lick for him wide open. He's already made one three on the night. But certainly I'm looking for Quinton Post and Devin McLaughlin to get some post touches here. I think we have a uh, Boston College has a, a significant advantage on the Providence bigs here with just Oduro and Gaines, the two biggest players on the floor, left for Providence. No, you're right. This is crunch time, KO. This is what you want. BC up two. Like you said, 19 seconds. This is where you get two or three consecutive stops. The game's over. So strong back out of the game. Boston College going with its starting five. Providence College back to its starting five. And here we go with 124 left. BC up 57-55. Inbound to Oduro, taking it right at Quinton Post. Bully ball and gets an easy two. Great play designed by Kim English out of the timeout for Oduro. Got a one-on-one -on -one matchup and it's tied at 57 with 110 left. Devin McLaughlin looking to inbound the ball and we're going to get a timeout for Boston College. So Coach Earl Grant going to use one of his timeouts with 108 left to try to set something up for the Eagles offensively. As in this type of game, Danier, every possession is huge. It is. And right there, that was a great timeout right there by Madsen. Um, getting close to the five-second count. But, you know, a great play right there by Duro. Great two guys going at it. He just made a tremendous play. But right now, Ty scored, you know, with the Eagles. I think right now they're going to go with MJ to double high pick and roll and see what he can create off, off of that. So to reset here, Providence College with eight fouls, BC with nine. So Providence is in the double bonus. BC is still in the one and one. Providence, one timeout remaining. Boston College has two timeouts remaining. The arrow belongs to Providence. As we have not had a jump ball this half and BC started the half with the basketball. So Providence is gonna look to extend their pressure, it looks like, full court. And we're gonna remain here with the starting five on the floor for Boston College. Madsen, Zachary, Claudel Harris Jr., Devin McLaughlin, and Quinton Post. Providence is gonna go a little bit bigger now on an offense-defense substitution and bring the big Castro in the game. So Castro and Oduro both in the game to combat Post and McLaughlin. Here we go, one minute left to go in regulation. Jaden Zachary pounds the dribble into the floor as he brings it up. Gives it on the, the wing to Claudel Harris Jr. Step back three for Claudel and it's good! Claudel Harris Jr. with a step back three gives the Eagles a 60-57 lead with 50 seconds left to go and Kim English is gonna call another timeout what a step back three for MJ with ice water in his veins. Wow, I thought they were going to go to double high, but MJ said, no, give me the clear out, step back. Guy landed in his airspace, probably could have been an and one, but a huge three right there by Claudel. Unbelievable. That's a great uh, point by you, Danier. Claudel Harris Jr. with a crossover dribble, and we've seen how good he is just creating a foot for himself. Now, in the ACC tournament, he went left a lot off that crossover. This time, Maybe to avoid a little bit of a, you know, a, a scouting uh, yep. tip, he goes right. He crosses over, goes to his right, crosses up Floyd Jr., step back three, right in Floyd's face. And as you mentioned, Floyd did not give him room to land. So Claudel landed on his feet, went down on his butt. And at this stage of the game, you're not going to get anything from these officials. Uh, but it very easily could have been one of those situations that happened at Devin McLaughlin in the ACC tournament against UVA where you didn't give McNeely, I believe or it right. was, at that time, space to land. No, you're absolutely right. But, I mean, right there, again, you you got to be give Claudel uh, and Coach Crank their staff credit because they've been running the double high and scoring yes. occasionally off that. 
that time they cleared it out. Claudel went by himself in, in a tremendous step back. And let's give Claudel a ton of credit. Quinton Post picked up three fouls in the first half. Pretty quickly, he picked up his fourth year early in the second half. And Claudel Harris Jr. has helped shoulder the scoring load. He's three of four from downtown. He now leads the Eagles with 17 points. And he has been the story here over the last few minutes for the Eagles offensively, hitting really tough contested jump shots. So to reset, that was Kim English's final timeout. Providence is out of timeouts here with 47.9 seconds left. Boston College still with two. The Eagles have no fouls to give Providence in the double bonus. And Providence will inbound here in the front court via ticket gains as he's got Pierre Duel. Floyd and Oduro as his running mates out there. Gains inbounds to Duel. Duel dribbling right on top of the Providence College logo. We'll see what they drew up coming out of this timeout. Switched on by Duel and it's poked away by Madsen, but Providence recovers. Pierre picks up the loose ball. Now 12 on the timer. Pierre working against Jaden Zachary. Jaden Zachary hounding him and it's stolen by MJ Harris. He's got a wide open breakaway. Oh, and he misses the dunk, but it's followed up by Devin McLaughlin. Harris stuffed himself on the rim, and Devin McLaughlin cleans up the loose change to give the Eagles a 62-57 lead. Providence College coming right back at you with Gaines. He misses a three. It's rebounded by Claudel Harris Jr., and Providence isn't even going to foul in only a five-point game. They're letting the Eagles rag the time off the clock, and that is going to do it for Boston College in a 62-57 victory over Providence. Unbelievable, partner. Unbelievable. I always say, MJ, lay the ball up. You are the worst finisher in basketball history. But what a win by the Eagles. Unbelievable. How about Devin following that up, getting an easy score? Unbelievable win for the Eagles right now. What a frenetic sequence there to finish that basketball game. <laughs> Uh, just tremendous defense, right, by the guards, by Claudel Harris Jr., by Jaden Zachary, forcing the turnover from Pierre. It led to a wide open run out for Claudel Harris Jr. He took off, instead of the layup variety, he chose to dunk it. He stuffed himself on the rim, but Devin McLaughlin, Johnny on the spot, yep. doing what Deb does, hustled all the way down the floor to be the first one down there after Claudel's miss. Got the offensive rebound, laid it in uncontested, and that gave the Eagles the 62-57 lead. Providence rushed back down for a three, missed it, and didn't even foul. There was still a good maybe 12 seconds, Danier, on the, on the clock when Providence missed that three-pointer. But they chose not to foul, which really surprised me, because BC was still in the one-and-one, -and, -one, and you never know what can happen. If you get a, you know, a front-end miss there, you never know what could happen. But... Kim English said he had seen enough, and he <laughs> called off the dogs. He did not foul, and he let BC dribble the last 12 seconds. And I'm in shock. That game ended so quickly. I thought it was gonna, we were going to be in for a foul shooting contest. 62-57 Boston College as they advance to the second round of the NIT here in Providence. We're going to have a full wrap-up on the Eagles postgame show coming up next along with a guest and coach, Earl Grant. We're going to be joined by Devin McLaughlin, and then we're going to be joined by head coach Earl Grant. So much more to get to here from the AMP in Providence. Boston College 62, Providence 57, the Eagles advance. You're listening to Boston College Basketball from Learfield.